Good morning and hello everybody. Welcome to Solo Bard Guided Playthrough. This character is going to be a Storm Singer, a spellcaster that is relatively squishy and in high contrast to the fighter I played before. The fighter I played was super bulky, tons of hit points, loads of defense, and while a little bit slow going when it came to clearing through the monsters, could pretty much take any hit. So getting around different types of traps and scary scenarios wasn't a big deal for that character. But what if you played a character that was squishier? What if you like spellcasters, characters that don't have as many hit points, and you still have to get past every single trap in the game? Well, let me tell you, that is exactly what this is for. Uh, this is the solo Storm Singer. I will be going through this character and showing you how to get through the whole game yourself, but as a much squishier character. So if you want to follow along, there will be a build in the description of the character that I am playing, with one exception. Here is the difference. This character is not a regular tiefling, this is a tiefling scoundrel. Now, there's no reason to do this. You do not have to do this at all. I'm doing this for cosmetics. The tiefling scoundrel plays a fiddle when you play music or when you cast your spells. And so I wanted to do that myself as well. So we have fiddle faddle, my ears hurt. And so I will be using this character instead. Um, but to start off the video, some people don't know how to change their iconic character out of the base class that they start as. So I'm going to start this video by showing you how to change your character out of that. So I wanted to get myself from a bard into a storm singer as an iconic. So I'm going to use this heart of wood. Every character when you create it starts with a lesser heart of wood in their inventory when you first make them. And you can use this to reroll some things. Specifically, I can use this to change up my character's, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the class. So I'm going to go lesser reincarnation here, dump in my lesser heart of wood, and it's going to bring me back to the fiddle, fiddle faddle. It's going to bring me back to the character creation screen so I can re-roll the stats on this character and also change it from a regular bard into a storm singer. Again, this is, there's no mechanical advantage for doing this. I'm just doing this because it makes a funny noise and also because it's a good, experience, a good opportunity to show people how to re-roll their character like that. So when you go through the process of making an iconic, it'll usually take you through the iconic list and you pick that one. However, for me, because I can I use my Lizard Heart of Wood, I can now choose Storm Singer, even though it is not a Storm Singer as a start. So now I'm actually a Storm Singer. So let's figure out exactly how we want to get the um, stats to go along here. So, important for me, maximum charisma. I want to have as much charisma as possible. That is very impactful. Second, constitution. You need health or your character is going to die. Third, you'd think wisdom. Wisdom doesn't really matter too much. My will saves are going to be fairly good and I'm likely going to be taking the feat that gives me will saves based off of my charisma anyway, so I don't care too much about that. Dexterity, you would think is important for armor class and reflex saves, but like, I'm just going to try not to get hit, and that should work out pretty well for me, so I'm not going to touch that. So then I'm left with strength and intelligence. Intelligence is skill points. I do want to get six skill points per level, which is why I need intelligence, so that's important. And then finally, strength, uh, because I need to carry things, and... If my character becomes overburdened, I get into the medium range, I'm going to be losing a bunch of defensive bonuses. So I need to be very, very careful. If you don't have as many points, just start with a 18 charisma instead, and then probably something like either a 10 dex or a 12 intelligence, something like that. Um, but because I am a 32 point build, that's where I'm going to start out. Um, so the skills. Uh, I only need a few. Spellcraft is going to increase my damage, so I want to have that. Use Magic Device is so I can use different wands and scrolls to help me on my adventure. Jump is because bards don't get the jump spell, and having height and being able to jump as a spellcaster is very good. Perform, because you need this as a bard. Without perform, your character doesn't function. Uh, haggle, because I want my character to have the ability to get better prices on Hardcore League and have a very different experience than my fighter who is always struggling for gold, which is very good. And then now I have four points left over and I have to choose one more place to go. For me, I think I'm going to go with balance here, um, because in general, I think that balance is going to be the the more successful option. I can get back up uh, if I get knocked down, which seems pretty good. Although the other consideration I had is either concentration for the early levels before I have quicken, or um, for bluff or diplomacy so I can get through some conversation topics. However, here's why you don't need to level bluff or diplomacy. As a bard, I get an ability called Inspire Competence, where I can increase this, the uh, skill points, or the sk all my skills by four, on top of having a, other spells that increase my skills. As a result, you can usually bypass most of those without really needing that, so it's not as important. So I'm gonna go with 
uh, balance here. And I'm going to put three points in because I want to put one point in the skill tumble. This just allows me to tumble. Um, you might be asking yourself, oh, is tumbling really good? Not really. I just find it fun to move around while tumbling. Um, so that's what we're doing. No heal, intimidate, repair, search, spot. Again, I won't be able to just find any secret doors and we'll have to figure out a way around that. Now, as far as feats go, um, you get a lot of spell-like abilities and you want to use them to the maximum effectiveness. And that is why we're going to use Maximize. Maximize spell makes your spells cost a lot more, but they do more damage. If you have a spell-like ability, the cost does not increase. And Storm Singers have a lot of spell-like abilities, which is very, very fun. And then as far as my spell at level one, um, my character is not going to have a huge amount of damage, but I will require some amount of defense to protect myself. Uh, and so I will be grabbing, I think, I don't think I'm going to grab Cure Wounds, actually. I don't know if I need that. I think I'm going to grab Sonic Blast. Shocking Grasp is an option for a level one damage spell because it does a D6 plus two damage per level, which is not that bad. You don't get Shocking Bolt, which is unfortunate. Um, hmm. I think we're going to go with Cure. I think Cure Light Wounds is the play here because I won't run out. I don't really want any of this other crowd control stuff. And I will want a Cure spell, so I think that is the play. Uh, and then lastly, I got to make sure my character looks good. I like the purple tieflings. I think the purple tieflings look pretty good. I'm going to hit them with a hit them with the randomize. Maybe like knock down the horns a little bit. I might cut out the character customization process because it's mostly just personal personal preference. And I like the like the curly horns. I think these ones look pretty good. Uh, I like when they have the big hair. So let's get the big hair going because it's like the special tiefling exclusive hair. Give them the big hair. Then hit them with a couple more randomizes. Um, Get some fun hair colors, looks pretty good. Make sure the tail looks good, tail looks great. And that's it, Fiddle Faddle, My Ears Hurt is now in the game as a Storm Singer. As I said, you don't need to do this as a um, scoundrel, but you can uh, if you want, uh, if you wanna follow along perfectly, but again, it's not going to matter. Now, technically scoundrels do get an ability called Fiendish Arpeggio, which is a very, very powerful ability that you can get. I, for the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna be using it um, until I get to level 15, where I would actually be a um, if you wanted to play as a scoundrel, you would be level 15. So I can leave this place, and now we're out into the world. And it's like I'm back to the regular regular Dungeons & Dragons online. So because this character starts at level 1, uh, whoops, because this character starts at level 1, I will be... I forgot. Uh, you can save and load layouts. So what you do is... I'm gonna load my layout here called main three. But if you wanna save a UI layout, you can go UI layout, save, and then the name of whatever you want it to be, and it'll save your layout. So because this is my layout for main three with this code string, I press enter, and now everything is aligned exactly as I want it. And it's clear, it's all over the screen. My chat is behind my camera now, and uh, I have all my action bars set up. So that's the idea. Uh, that's something you can do for yourself. Uh, if you didn't know you can do that, you have that power. As I said, because I'm going to be uh, playing this character fully solo, I will not be interacting with my own bank other than to deposit things, because I will be collecting too many stuff and I want to deposit stuff, but I will not be taking anything out I did not already put in there. So we'll get there. We'll get through it. And then finally, uh, I get a mount. I think I'm going to go with the unicorn. Unicorns are very barred adjacent, so we'll be doing that. Hey, is there any source for builds for a new player? Most threads I find are from 2015 or so. Skunan, I'm so glad you asked me. Um, so my name is Stream Tom. I am a like build guy. That's my job. My job is literally making builds for people on the computer. And so there's a thread there called the build repository. That's mine. It has all of the builds that I've ever done sorted by date. And then there's a playlist called the Beginner Basics that How We Do Win also linked, so we link both of those things. The playlist is a YouTube playlist that goes through several classes and gives you extremely straightforward beginner builds and explains all the concepts in them if you want to learn how to play it. So uh, tons and tons of builds out there that I've put out. Um, there are a lot of old builds. I try to keep mine as up to date as possible. You actually just tuned in. I'm doing a section here uh, where I'm going to be playing uh, the whole game solo and uh, kind of giving some advice along the way. Okay, so how do we set up the enhancement points? A lot of people think that the... Okay. Quest okay. Received. A lot of people think that the Stormsinger tree is a... Uh, you know, it's it's pretty good, and that's where you want to be spending most of your points. But the trick is, even though I'm playing as a Stormsinger, I'm not spending all my points there. I'm going to be spending the most of my points in Spellsinger, uh, getting the Shout spell-like ability as soon as I can, grabbing the reduced spell point cost, 
and the spell song Vigor, as well as sustaining song and inspire, inspiration melody Frolic. A lot of people, for a reason I don't entirely understand, will not go for these things first, and I highly recommend you do. Um, Shout is one of the best spell-like abilities in Heroics. It just kills everything, and this character is going to kill very quickly. Um, sustaining Song, which is a heal over time, which is very powerful. Uh, Inspiration Melody Frolic, which makes you immune to almost all forms of crowd control. And then finally, uh, Spell Song Vigor, which gives you spell points back passively. Now you might be wondering, Tom, I swear I've seen you talk about Stormsinger and how good it is. Don't you want to be using the Stormsinger tree because you're a Stormsinger? And you would think so. However, bards really struggle for spell points before level 20. So before level 20, I recommend you'd go up here with the Spellsinger tree. After level 20, once you've got some more mana, you've got some extra items, that's when I would recommend you take the points out of here and you put them up here and you go for the Stormsinger stuff. But for leveling, we're going to be doing that. So to get started, we're going to be spending your points exactly where you would think. That's right, in the Stormsinger tree. I know I'm being confusing. I'm going to be grabbing both this spell-like ability and this spell-like ability for leveling, and I'm going to be doing quite a few resets as we go. This was a really professional answer. That's me, Mr. Professional. So I'm going to be starting with the Storehouse Secret, and I'm actually going to be doing this quest on normal. The reason why is because my character is very weak. I have a 12 strength. Oh, you know what I should do? I should get a guild. I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to be starting with the Storehouse Secret. The reason why I'm going to do that is uh, because the... Um, Storehouse Secret uh, gives a little bit of platinum when you loot some of the chests, and you can use that to buy a higher link, which will be very helpful for the early game. So hopefully I'll be able to do that quickly. But if you're new to Dungeons and Dragons Online and you're checking out this uh, video series, because this is all going to go up on YouTube, you're checking out the video series and you're like, man, you know what? I need some early game tips. One of my best pieces of advice is join a leveling guild. On basically every single server, there are a series of leveling guilds. Um, on... Hardcore, there's tons of guilds which just invite everybody, such as the guilds that I run. So Fiddle, oh, I need a guild invite button. Here we go. Fiddle Battle. Um, so I'm currently running a guild called Two Weeks Notice, which is a jab at Stand Stone Games for giving us one week notice before the Hardcore League. And as a content creator, that's very stressful because I have to make a lot of content in a short period of time. Um, but the uh, on the other servers, you can find lots of leveling guilds. On Arcanessa, you have guilds like Blue Light, Barbarian's Guild. Uh, Order of the Emerald Claw, um, Tycoons of Tomorrow. And there are lots of guilds like that on every server that will be able to um, just invite you in and you can get some ship buffs. Guilds have airships. Not only do they allow you to quickly get from one place to another, but they also give you a whole bunch of passive buffs. And you're going to see how good they are when I go click them on this character. Are we taking bets if Shrim will get his own bard killed on hardcore? I hope I don't get my own bard killed on hardcore. Why don't you use Lesser Heart of Wood to be a tiefling scoundrel for the fire and sonic dot that you get... For free at level one i am a tiefling scoundrel i'm just not using the dot because i don't want people to to use the dot or like pe most people are going to be doing this i'm just doing this because it makes a, a fiddle sound effect if you're watching at home just play a regular tiefling um because one you might not own tiefling scoundrel whereas tiefling is free um and so i'm just doing it for the sound effect i'm not in a guild right 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 so i'm going to go to the mailbox here get my guild invitation. Again, there's lots of guilds out there that will just invite pretty much anybody. So you join in. Uh, and then once you're part of the guild, you can go up to the ship. And by clicking it, you go up to this this item here and uh, watch the stats. See, I have 41 hit points. I touch this button. And now I have 62 because you get so many buffs for being in a guild. If you are a solo player, I highly recommend you join a leveling guild. Uh, there are tons of guilds where no, people don't chat to each other at all, and they don't say anything. Now, up here, it's a little cluttered, and it looks kind of ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the options and type in guild. Hide guild buffs. Boom. And now by doing such a thing, it's just this little icon to remind me, oh, yes, I have guild buffs. And now we're going to get to the adventuring. Barricade is 2 PRR per rank today. Interesting. I thought you would have known that as somebody... Yeah, this one is 2 PRR per rank same thing with this, where this is four spell power instead of two. And same with this, where it's two melee power instead of one. You can also rerun quests for loot or money. Yes, you can. I just click them. I don't read them. Hey, to be fair, readings for losers. <laughs> right, guys? Who reads? Read more like L. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. Now we're going to go do the uh, actual quest here. Um, guild. And as I set up my chat channels, because I did not do that yet. 
Uh, all right, so we're going to do this quest on normal. I want to have a small amount of platinum just so I can quickly buy a hireling, as hirelings are very good. So I'm going to put my heal somewhere I can easily press it. My search I'm going to put somewhere, fascinate, and sneak. So because I'm just a bard level one, um, I don't really have a lot of abilities or attacks or things I can do. So I'm just going to run around and smack stuff and run through this quest. Watch sometimes videos so you can read for me. True. You're working on a Storm Singer Ranger build yesterday. Is this going to be that build? No. This is not going to be that build. You'll notice my character's damage is horrible, which is why I will be buying a, uh, buying a hireling that will be doing most of the killing for me. Um, because again, my character's damage is absolutely horrendous. I'm a spellcaster. Spellcasters, and I put my points in as a spellcaster, you can play bards as a melee and have like a reasonable amount of melee stats, but I did not do that. Instead, I decided to um, focus on the spell casting and max out the charisma, so I can't really fight the monsters that well. But that's okay, because I don't need to fight the monsters that well. I'm gonna be using a hireling for that in the purpose. Also, or in, uh, in the future. I forgot to mention, the reason why I played as a storm singer in the first place is so I can do this. So every time I use a spell, that's why I went with uh, Tiefling Scoundrel. Tiefling Scoundrels, for those that don't know, they have a unique spellcasting animation. Similarly, their bard song has a different sound effect and animation. Which is pretty neat, and that is why I did it. There's no mechanical the advantage, it's just, I, it felt cool, so I'm doing that. Um, a regular bard is actually better as a storm singer, um, with the exception of the Fiendish Arpeggio. Anyway, solve the puzzle because you have it memorized, grab yourself a gilded scroll case, and then leave. Because I completed this quest on normal, um, I have like one item I picked up. It is a scepter of combustion and healing lore that I don't need. It provides me no benefit, um, but I did get one platinum. So now I can talk to the hireling vendor and say hello and get a hireling. I'm going to take Dryad Will-O-Wisp because Dryad has a shield and a one-handed weapon, which means Dryad will melee with me and also heal me when I take damage. So now that I've done that, I'm going to repeat this quest on Elite Difficulty. I will be running everything on Elite Difficulty if you are following along and you don't have the VIP subscription, so you can't open things on Elite. That's okay. You can just run things on uh, Normal and just do some repetitions as you go. Um, important note, Rugged Belt. This is 5 health. I'm going to take the Rugged Belt because it gives 5 health, because 5 health is good. Now, one of the reasons why you used to not run quests on normal difficulty first is there is something in the game called a bravery bonus. What bravery bonus does is it makes it so that you gain um, a bonus to your... Uh, sorry, what bravery bonus does is it makes it so that you gain a bonus to your XP if you run it on elite before you run it on other difficulties. This was a mechanic that was in the game for a long time. However, it was removed a few years ago because they found that it made it so that people didn't really want to run lower difficulties, even if it was easier, um, or they would have a better time. So they changed it. So now, instead, the bravery bonus gives you a bonus when you run the higher difficulties, and that's it. So really, there's no bravery about it, but that's okay. It's just a better system. Um, another thing that's important when you have a hireling, I highly recommend putting them on active. Active means they will seek out enemies on their own and fight them, and you don't have to command them all the time, uh, which is much better than actually having to command them. You also notice that Dryad's hitting these things for like 20 damage a strike, which is way better than what I'm doing, because I'm doing almost nothing. New hardcore season? Yes. Uh, hardcore ends February 7th with hardcore season 7. This key is hard to find. Sahagin emerges from a hidden passage demanding... Uh, question. Hotkeys and combat casting. Since you say 22 keys is enough to run a spellcaster so they get so many spells, when I say 22 keys is enough, it depends on the caster. But yeah, you can probably get by with 10, but I... Spellcasters are harder because you have more spell, more keys to press. Unfortunately, no good items for me yet. I got a great sword I can sell. This is actually a great paladin weapon for low levels. Keen axiomatic? God. That would have been a cool day one paladin weapon. But nope, not for me. Um, so breakables. When you break things in quests, the, it'll, the experience support, which is up here, or it's the X button on the keyboard, will keep track of how many things you've broken, how many monsters you've killed, and will give you a bonus if you do enough. Um, my recommendation is that breakables, I only really do if I'm in a group, with a couple exceptions. Um, but I only really do breakables if I'm in a group, so, uh, because you can split up the labor. If you have six people, you don't really need six people fighting all the monsters in the quest, and so you can have some people kind of splitting up some of the work and, uh, you know, breaking some boxes and other stuff here or there. So keep that in mind. 
All right, hello, Linus. Now he's going to give me another belt, and then it doesn't matter. And now I'm going to do the rest of the quest here. Um, before I go in, I'm going to spend an enhancement point. I'm going to grab my first spell-like ability here, which is Sonic Blast. The Sonic Blast spell-like ability is not amazing. It's a single target damage spell, and the damage is going to be kind of low, but I can apply Maximize to it. So at least it's going to be doing 150% more damage, because that's what Maximize does, and it's only going to cost six spell points per cast, which is very cool. Now this spell here, I'm going to hope, or spell this quest, the Kanith Crystal, I'm going to hope I don't fail it, um, has enemies attempting to uh, run in and destroy the, the Kanith Crystal, crystal the crystal keeping hidden. everything warm. I'm going to be using the Intimidate skill, even though I don't have it trained because I'm a charisma-based character, my Intimidate is 7, to make sure the monsters don't actually make it to the crystal. If you stand in this area, only two monsters will attack it, one that spawns here and another one that spawns in the exact same place. They spawn one after the other. Additionally, if you stun a monster with Sonic Blast, it resets their aggro. So I'm gonna let Dryad have some fun, go fight those guys, and I'm just gonna be watching this corner for the most part. Just watching the box. Dryad will do most of the work. I have to do a whole lot. Heal better too for the cleric from favorite soul ones. Playing a caster is very intimidating. Yeah, it can be, absolutely. A lot of people are nervous about playing casters. That's why I hope this little chunk of video guide will help some people. What's up, Prince? How are you doing? Is there a reason there's no video for the fighter class in the beginner playlist? Or are you blind? Uh, that's a great question. Is there no video for the fighter class? I swear there's a video for the fighter class. Oh. Um. I got distracted while I was partway through making it, and I didn't put the fighter video up. Huh. Well, that's cool. If you do want to uh, play fighter, I can answer any questions you might have. Um, and I actually have a series, so I'm doing this, which is the solo playthrough with Bard. I actually have an almost full series of uh, solo fighter where I went from 1 to 32 playing fighter by myself. So no no items, nothing to start, that sort of thing. Um, it's already done, so that's already on YouTube. Uh, you can check out that. I should get the video, but I'm an idiot. So I apologize. I didn't brain too good. Here is a link to that. Um, and it's exactly what this is, but it's specifically for fighter. So if that's more interesting, that's there. If you have any fighter questions, I can help you out. If you want a fighter build guide, a, it's something that's easy to follow. Here's a paste bin, which is the build that I used for the solo fighter playthrough. I usually post them on like nicer formatted places, like on the forums and things like that. But um, just put it into a paste bin for some reason. I don't know, I was just feeling fancy. Uh, and the fighter build is a sword and shield fighter, so it's designed to be a, a fighter that fights with a sword and a shield. Um, and I do go over in the video some of the concepts about what, I'm, what I wanted to do with it. Now, as you can see, the damage is really slow on this character. It's going to take me a while to level up at this point. Um, but don't you worry, Bard really turns around as you get higher levels. And it's very cool. Is there a reason there'll be a swashbuckler pass soon? There might be. There's supposed to be a forum update? There was supposed to be. I want to play a classic melee dwarf, so I'm trying to figure out what's the most fun or most viable. If you take the build that I use that's in the paste bin and just pick the dwarf race instead of the warforged race, um, it works the same, if not better. Okay, so here you got three options for bracers. Axe block, braces of aid, and spearbane. Take spearbane. Spearbane reduces the damage you take from uh, slashing, uh, sorry, piercing weapons by four, and most monsters in the early game use piercing weapons. Skeleton claws are piercing. Um, the like kobolds with their spears are piercing. Troglodytes are piercing. Uh, orcs are piercing. Spears are very good. Players don't have access to spears, but monsters do, and uh, they use them heavily. And arrows. Yeah. Coming from deep in the crypt, you hear and like I said, it's going to take a little while until you get there. Strange. Yeah, the build in the basement is a Warforged build, so all you do is just like take um, take Dwarf instead of Warforged. The point spent is exactly the same, which is cool, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then as far as the feats, I think there's Adamantine Body, one of the early feats. On the paste bin, feats is pretty early. I take Adamantine Body at level 3, performing some kind of ritual. and... Instead of doing that, you can just move all of the feats up by one. 
So instead, you would just take mobility at level 3, because you don't need to take an armor feat. And then you would take whirlwind attack at level 6, or level 4, because you don't need to take mobility. And then... Uh, you can't move and prove critical slashing up, so you would remove weapon focus slashing up to six instead, and kind of go from there. You continue to hear cultists about their evil work from further inside the crypt. There's a big difference between early, mid, and end game. Is it generally unlikely to reach end game on the first tune? I wouldn't say so. It's all about your perseverance, and also, are you following a build guide or not? If you're using your own character, it's very easy to make a bricked character in this game that isn't very good um, because you get to choose everything, which is super cool, but also means you have to choose everything, so you might make a, a blunder here and there. That's okay. So if you follow a build guide, you should be able to make it to the endgame. Pretty much every, all the character builds I play, I go all the way up to the level cap and run around with them. Um, but if you are somebody who... And if I ever play a character that's not very good, I usually kind of say that outright. So I would say it depends. You, but your first character, um, have the expectation that you're probably not going to finish your first character for two reasons. One, there's too many cool ideas. And so when you walk around and you see people, like, you know, doing all... Oh, yeah, the other thing is the fighting proficiency. Oh, you get so many extra feats? Oh, my gosh. I forgot. You don't need Bastard Sword proficiency because you choose Dwarven War, ax war Axes. Vanguard Dwarven Fighter, that's been fun. Oh, true. Um... I could probably make a copy of this pace bin and make a dwarf compatible version if you want. Scoon on. I have to I would have to move a couple things, but I can easily do that. Would did would that sound interesting to you? Question mark? If we are would you appreciate it if I if I quickly just adjusted this so it was dwarf? So you'd have a dwarf fighter that you could follow easily? A chest. Okay, so it's here is how this trap works. This is a trapped chest, but I can't disable traps. It's okay. The trigger is stepping in the water. After I step in the water, the trap doesn't go off anymore. I'm completely safe. So as long as I step in the water and wait, I can step over here, pull this lever to open the gate, step in the water, the trap goes off, and wait, and then I can go. It's stepping in the water that causes the trigger, so you can just do that to keep yourself completely safe. How neat is that? In the middle of this yeah, I'm gonna do a bit of um, multitasking here. Altar. Buy it. The um, For generations, the um, have forestalled us. Can I copy? Is that a thing? The oh, clone? Clone this? Clone. Oh, baby, I can clone it as a new paste. Okay, here we go. Appears. Solo fighter race magic. dwarf. Uh, let's make this a 28 pointer. How do we make it a 28 pointer? Uh, you drop a magical what do you drop to make it a 28 pointer. You fit the last crest in place, and the magic probably some of the strength. The yeah, the build is very good. Yeah, the build is viable for the entire game. I soloed the entire thing on the on Elite difficulty, which is the, the difficulty that's beyond normal and hard. Um, I'm just doing a bit of mindful editing at the, at the same time. Blowing up all the stuff here. Try to do this for me. Thank you. Do you have to lose four points? You go 17 and 13. That's how you would do that. You do not have DR. It's gone. Thank you, Dryad. Is she not breaking the altar of the devour? Lady, I'm paying you. I'm actually not paying you. Well, I already pay, did pay her, but I've been making way more money than she has, so maybe I should be more nice. The treasure chest in the antechamber. Okay, so that's good. And then we change the feats up here. So instead of taking exotic weapon proficiency bastard sword, you're going to take um Weapon Focus Slashing. You take that. And then instead of taking Adamantine Body, you're going to take Weapon Specialization Slashing. Uh, I'm just moving the feats around. Sorry. That's the same. 
And then you have to move some other feats up. Uh, Amulet of Inner Focus. Amulet of Brute sucks because it makes you dumb. And it's one of the few cursed items in the game. Don't take it. Just take the Amulet of Inner Focus. It's a better item. Uh, I'm probably... Actually, I'm just going to go silent. And then I'm going to edit this out when I do it later. Then word comes that your presence is requested in the tavern. Okay, it's done. Sorry, I went silent so that it would have a big gap in the tape when I edited this. Okay, congratulations. Here's a new version for dwarves. Easy. Anyway, back to this. And again, I, I just went totally silent so I'd have a huge gap in the tape so I could just easily do the cut. Sorry for disrupting. Oh, it's all good. Um... Anyone else have Twitch hiccup on them? Not me. This must be the collaborator stepping in from the dark. Uh, but yeah, uh, so a couple pro tips if you're new to the game, since most of this is just me passively attacking the monsters. So, a um, couple pro tips if you are brand new. Number one. Uh, oh, also, what's up, Smexy? How are you doing? Um, number one, if you are new and you play with people you don't know, just tell them you're new. A lot of people... I'd have been playing, like, the game's been around for 16 years. Going on 17 is the year's, uh, the game's 17-year anniversary this year. So the game's been around for a long time. So have a lot of the players. So there's an expectation that when you see somebody, there's a good chance they are an existing player and they already know what to do. If you don't know what to do, just let people know. Um, and people will drop everything they're doing and they will help you out. But they're not psychic, unfortunately. So uh, do let people know if you need assistance or if you don't know where to go or if you have any questions. Just ask and people are super friendly. Um, also, same thing. If you don't know how something works, just ask somebody. Just find somebody playing the game and they will help you out. Whether it's a Twitch streamer, whether it is in one of the many Discord channels that are helpful. There's a lot of places to get good information. Uh, another thing, the DDO Wiki is a wonderful, magical tool. It is an incredibly powerful and useful website that has so much good information on it. Um, I can, I, I highly, highly, highly recommend the DDO Wiki. It's up to date. It's got all sorts of good stuff. If you need to know something, DDO Wiki. It's possible to get world attack and a pure two-handed fighter paladin without sacrificing the essential two-handed fighting feats. No, it is not Baskoth. 
That's why Paladins don't take any of the cleaves, because in Knight of the Chalice, you get two cleaves and you do not need a rolling attack. Because Paladins are two feet starved. They have to take too many feats. Yeah. The expression is suffer in silence. If you say nothing, you will suffer in silence and nobody will know how to help you. It's not that people don't want to help, it's that they literally don't help. Now, after that traitorous Jacobi Drexel. So don't suffer in silence and bite people. Also, if you're watching this and you're like, how come you didn't take your level? Because I have enough experience to level up. It's because I was distracted, so I forgot. So what are you going to do? Um, also, if you have more questions, obviously, you can ask a helpful live streamer. Um, and speaking of helpful live streamer, hi, my name is Strimtom. I make YouTube videos, but I stream on Twitch. It's actually my primary job. That's pretty much my profession is being an online entertainer. If you'd like to join, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash shrimptom and follow the channel. That way you know every single time I'm live streaming. Or become a member of my Discord, link below, so you can see the schedule and know when I'm going to be live streaming ahead of time. How cool is that? Also, you get to ask your DDO questions there and stuff. It's really useful and you can find out all the information. God damn, when I'm trying to pretend that I'm like really professional, hoo-wee, I can put on the tone of voice. The old, the old gamer tone of voice. Make sure to like that subscribe button and smash that up but up like subscribe button thing on the screen what have you. And want streams to be a total surprise? Honestly, you'd be surprised how often being a part of the Discord and looking at the schedule still means the streams are a complete surprise to you. Uh uh Down in the F tier, guess it's updated. Don't remember the upload date. Oh, that was a joke. It is an old video, but that was also a joke. Um, I wouldn't rate any class in DDO lower than B. Because every class in DDO has a distinct place in the game. Every class is good. Um, it's one of the nice things about playing Dungeons & Dragons Online, is unlike some other games, there are no bad classes. Yeah, it was F for fighter. Like... Why did I rate Fighter F? Because it was F for Fighter. Yeah, that's why I put Cleric in C, because it was C for Cleric. And A for Alchemist. I think I put Alchemist in the S tier, though. And S for Sorcerer. Uh, just because some cla all classes are good doesn't mean they're not all, or that all classes are equal. Um, S for Sorcerer. Also, S for Alchemist. S for... Um, Alchemist, Sorcerer, and Druid. And rogue. Those are the, probably the three classes I would put in S tier right now. If I did, if I did actually do a serious list, they're just good for everything. Leveling end game. I picked up the discarded ring because the discarded ring gives ten mana. Safer, That's a lot. And I'm also going to be uh, going and leveling up now. So let's find the bard trainer. Who is I think over Island. here. Yeah, and fighter also got buff recently, so they got second wind from five E. Except unlike five E, where second wind gives you like a D10 health. Second Wind in DDO gives you half of your health back. And half of your health is a lot of health. Alright, so now I'm going to be taking Move Speed. I could get Move Speed Boots, but just by taking the spell Move Speed is a little better. Hi, can I have one plat for a Hireling? If you don't have, that's okay. Here you go, buddy. You can have... Hey, you know what? Just gotta help people out. Good luck. Go get them. Get him, tiger. We're little gnome fella. Yeah. So you're, if you're wondering where I'm going to spend my points next, I'm going to be going here and picking up Cure Light Wounds. Why? Because by having both Cure Light Wounds here and Sonic Blast here, it means if I take damage, I now have a maximized cure that I can very instantaneously put on myself where the cast uh, cost has not gone up. And I have still have Sonic Blast. I'll be replacing this in the future, but now I can do this. Oh, I guess I was trying to heal that guy. Alka Michael. Um, usually I go out and do Korthos, so I think I will. I think I'm going to go out and do a quick round of Korthos. Get some extra experience points. I'm going to do everything except for the final quest, Misery's Peak, because I don't like Misery's Peak. Uh, it sucks. Kainth Crystal. Hey, man. Kainth Crystal's a hard one. Gotta help him out. The Misery? Yeah. It is Misery. It's aptly named. Well named. All right, let's go stop some saw hoggin. So there's a saw hoggin here. I'm gonna hit him with my my spell, which does nothing because I accidentally shot it into this little wall here because I am not paying that much attention. Anyway, I'm gonna bounce in this quest on elite, ignore these monsters, and some my hireling. Should be a good time. 
as I said, I'm going to be doing all the quests out here. Um, and I will be avoiding doing some of the stuff. Let me get move speeds, and I have Expeditious, which is good. I'm going to stun this Whelp. Um, the Whelp will immediately go for this uh, bell here, and if it rings it, it summons more monsters. By stunning it with my Sonic Blast, I don't have to deal with that, which is nice. And again, Sonic Blast is maximized, so it's doing 25 damage, which is a lot more than I would normally do. It's not amazing, but again, it's a lot more than I would normally do. My Cure is maximized, and it's healing me for 21, which is about a quarter of my health, which at this point is quite a lot for, you know, this level of character. Hey, Bastion, was the game kind of refreshing? Watch Rainbow is always so jaded. Well, yeah, but that's because World of Warcraft sucks. Like, I'd be jaded, too, if I had to play Shadowlands and try to, like, pretend to be excited about it. Yeah, dude, Battle for Azeroth? Oh, I love this. It's so good. Oh, man. Uh, these dailies? Mm, so good. The nice thing about Dungeons and Dragons Online is because you have an infinite... Oh, I'm going I'm going right here because there's a trap on the left side. Because I get to play a game that is highly customizable, I can always play something new and try something new and have a good time. And the game is consistently updated, so there's so many new things. For example, you might not know this, but as at the time of recording, the anniversary event is going to be happening in about a month from now. And in about a month from now, you're going to be receiving new archetypes to the game. A ranger called the Dark Hunter that is all about trapping. A uh, new warlock called the Acolyte of the Skin that is basically a, about instead of taking a pact with a demon, you literally fuse with a demon, becoming part demon yourself. Um, and finally, the third one, the Blightcaster Druid, which is about a druid that focuses on the death side of the cycle of life and death. Which is so sick! And that's just three basically new classes that are coming out that you can now cross-class and mix between your different characters. So it's easy for me to be can't be passionate about it because there's always new stuff coming out that's just distracting. What sales happened during the anniversary? I don't know. Voice class DDO, ask any longtime player who don't like change and their claim that Alchemist is bad. Very true. Yeah. Also, I think the other thing too is I try not to be like stuck in misery. I think that it's very easy to play video games your MMORPGs and all that stuff, and it's kind of like the same, you're just doing the same things over and over, and eventually it just kind of wears you down over time. Um, if I'm un feeling unhappy about something or I don't like something, I try to make the decision to change. Um, so I want to make a change, whether it's like just walk away from it or take a break from playing it or change up my mentality. Um, it's the reason why I don't really get mad at you. I used to, back in the day. Like, I used to play League of Legends hey, and just get Strim, so mad all the time. Brian here. But now if I play a game How like that... How is Bard feeling after you nerfed Sonic Blast? It feels good after I nerf Sonic Blast. Thank you for asking. Um, but now, when I play games like that, if I stop having fun, I immediately stop playing. Being reforged in the Crucible? Oh, you're having a lot of fun in the Crucible, eh? What's your favorite gun to be killed by? Is it made for fun? I actually think League of Legends is a very fun game. It's just anytime you have to talk to another human being, it sucks. How do you feel about the Warlock archetype? Um, it's a Warlock that's designed to be melee, but still be a spellcaster. I love it. Yeah, usually it's stuff like you see the last word a lot. If you haven't been killed by Yotun yet, oh, you will. Can't believe this streamer literally held SSG at gunpoint to nerf Sonic Blast and then doesn't even use it after. SMDH. Yeah, that's true. I did do that. Uh, I am Canadian, um, and the nerf happened during COVID, so it was hard to, like, get across the border. But you know what? Hey, sometimes you got to go to great lengths to achieve greatness. That's what I'm all about, you know? That's what I'm all about. Loot this chest and hopefully get an item. This only spawns boots. Oh, I got the Expeditious boots. I don't even want them. Okay, so this spider, it's up here. There's traps. A lot of people die to the traps here. What you do is you just range it down. And now that I did damage to it, the spider has to run to me. So I don't have to worry about running through the traps. I can just come back here, and it's going to die. Slow roasted bear. That sounds dramatic. Also, Zeftaro, thank you so much for getting out a sub to Fire Eater. Thanks for the support, dude. Very kind of you. Six wisdom, my dwarf is stuck at eight. Left That's left over from the previous race. Yeah, it should just start at eight. And same thing with the charisma. It should just start at eight. Or start at six, I think. Yeah, Warforged get minus to charisma and wisdom. Now what you do is you wait for the trap. Uh -huh. out Thanks for answering all my questions. Anytime, Bazkoth. I'm more than happy to help. And also, thank you for subscribing. Now you get ad-free viewing on my channel. Oh my god. 
And now, right in the middle of what I'm talking about, I, I think we might actually have a hype train approaching because Pixelated Phrygian also very, very generously decided to gift out five subs to the channel. Holy guacamole. Thank you so much for the support. That's incredibly kind of you. I really appreciate it. Damn, dude. Welcome to the stream team. Rinse, Rapconica87, the original dad, Jehusafet, and Porto HS. Thank you. That's very, very kind. So, um, very, very generous. I appreciate that. Hopefully I can be entertaining and will remain entertaining into unto the future. Also, Quintoxic just gives it a sub to Skunon. If you're wondering, I'm just gonna be walking around to grab this location here, because it gives an extra 144 XP. Damn, thank you, dude. Very kind of you. You guys are so generous to me today. All I'm doing is playing a bard poorly. So, thank you. It's very, very kind. Important note, this character is going to be relatively squishy. Where you get most of your tank from the bard is the War Chanter tree, and I'm not going to be spending a lot of points on the War Chanter tree, so my character is going to be very squishy. So this will be a very interesting experience going through by comparison. We all just want to see you kill another bard. That's good. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, if you play a bard on Hardcore League, you always die. Every bard dies. I don't know what it is. They just all die. It's not Hardcore. I'm on Hardcore League. I like doing the solo on Hardcore because it makes it more dramatic. Adds more tension. Now here, um, I have to deal with the traps. Um, there are two ways to deal with the traps. You can either search this door here to find a secret valve that will turn off the poison, um, or you can run through the traps. I'll do both. My header isn't up. It's not. It's because I'm not using... I was using Streamlabs OBS, but Streamlabs OBS has a program, is a pile of complete garbage, and uh, it turns out it was freezing my computer and causing other issues. So I stopped using it. I'm just using regular OBS, but the files I was using were built into um, Streamlabs, and so I had to, uh, I had to change, the, or I can't move the files, and so I have to build a new overlay, and I just haven't done that yet, but I will be doing that at some point. Eight weeks on Monday. Nice. Is it, if, can you, can, so if I want a puppy, can you send it by mail to me across the entire country of Canada? You know, just, like, put them in a box and just deliver it over. Or drive. If you want to drive it over, that'd be cool. But this layout is clean. It is clean. I will likely have the info showing up. I might use what I do with the advertisements, where the advertisements kind of flow in and out. I might do something like that with the overlay, where the overlay isn't always visible. Um, and instead, it'll just sort of, like, go in and then disappear. I think that's what I want to do and have that transition. Come purchase one for $400. Damn, what a deal. Do you accept Canadian tire money? Just real question. Uh, these are real ice traps. Don't get hit by them. You will die. And then when you die, you go, ugh. And you have to restart this whole quest. But you don't. If you die here and you're not on Hardcore League, you can just run back to the shrine and pick yourself back up, assuming you have some movement speed on your character. If you don't have any movement speed, it might be a little bit harder. Also, after you turn these off, um, give them a second, because the cold is still going to be going across, and you definitely don't want to take that trap in. Remember. So that's another thing you can know. Damn, no Canadian Tire money, and I have to go get it? Yeah, dude, I don't know. Um, if I was going to do a third solo playthrough, I will probably do it as a Dark Hunter. Who in the yeah. flame are you? I'm using a Two-Handed Axe or the Dwarven Axe. You're going to be using a Dwarven War Axe for the most part and a shield. The build is designed to have a Dwarven War Axe in one hand. Dwarven War Axes count as two-handed weapons, even though you only have one hand on it. They're called hand-and-a-half weapons, which means you can be like a shield dwarf with the phalanx while also being like boom, boom, and chopping everything apart in front of you because it has full, like all the cleaves and everything else is built in. Additionally, your build, when you get to level 4, will have an attack called Whirlwind Attack, which is like you do a 360 and cleave everything. Mm, that's a good ability. It's so cheap for pups. And my experience is pure red water quality is going to be $3,000. Yeah, this is why I don't own dogs, by the way. Um, so you're going to notice that I'm going to be using Intimidate. I want to make sure that um, these guys are not taking damage. You have to keep Lars Hayden alive. That's the quest. 
You also notice that as a spellcaster, I'm not really casting a lot of spells. Don't worry about that. And a feed on a level one playing with Dwarven Rax, because Dwarven Rax is, with one of them in your hand, counts as two-handed fighting. That's the secret. If you read the feat Two-Handed Fighting, it will give you a description for it that specifically references Dwarf of War Axes and Bastard Swords. I use Bastard Swords on my Warforge because Bastard Swords look really cool. They're big swords. But Dwarves get Dwarf of War Axe entirely for free, so why not use Dwarf of War Axe because you get it for free and it's basically the same thing. That's the idea. Also, don't feel silly. There are tons of situations like that all over DDO. Also, Quintoxic... Thank you so much for subscribing for the second time today. Uh, I really appreciate you subscribing for 28 months earlier today. Um, and so now you're subscribing for 29 months in the same day. Very impressive. I have no idea how you did that, which is why you have the wait what. But you know what? Great job. Great job. That's, that's, that's class. That's class. Guess you forgot last month. Hey, worse for me, man. But yeah, it's important to note, DDO is complicated. So like, as somebody said as a pro tip earlier, uh, nothing in DDO stacks. All the items in your inventory that you get, if you get like two strength items, only the highest one counts. There are exceptions to this you'll learn about later, but in general, only the highest number on your stat counts. Um, and that is very confusing for a lot of new people, because if you're used to pretty much any other MMORPG, like when you play WoW, every item is, if you're playing Warrior, gives you strength and stamina. Every piece of gear you pick up is strength, stamina, plus either crit, versatility, um, mastery, or crit, versatility, mastery, haste. Those are the four stats. Thank you. Um, and they all stack. In DDO, that is the exact opposite. Only the highest one stacks. This game is based off of 3.5 Dungeons and Dragons, so if you're familiar with 3.5 edition Dungeons and Dragons, this will help you a lot in your experience. Have I picked up anything good? I get. I got a breastplate I can't use because I can't wear medium. I have a shield I can't use because I'm. Uh, it has arcane spell failure on it. I can't deal with that. I will keep a shield in my inventory, so I'll probably keep this. Because uh, you need a shield. Also, this has I think vitality. Yeah. So it's Hit points. Uh, while holding a shield, you take half damage from anything that requires a reflex save, which means traps. I didn't get the quest. I didn't talk to anybody for any of the other quests. Did I? I have the other quest here, so we'll go get the other quest, I guess. I'm going to be down one quest. So to make up for it, I'm going to be doing a quick run around here and picking up the rest of the Corthos Island Explorers. So go over here, and you run through uh, up here, because up here there's a little camp, you come across and then you go behind the camp, camp and climb up this hill, and you find the broken aqueduct, on a log, trying in vain go this, this broken structure. I'm going to go up to Misery's Peak, talking about Warforge, I remember you saying Mithril Armor is bad, but I don't know why, because it's light armor, and light armor's thing is maximum dexterity bonus. So the armor is lower, but you can use more dexterity to apply to your character. Like, uh, so you can apply more of your dexterity to your armor. But the problem is, this is the first item I get in the whole video game. And has max dexterity bonus of 7 as light armor. Mithril body has a maximum dexterity bonus of, what is it, uh, 5. So Mithril Body is worse than the worst possible light armor in Dungeons & Dragons Online. And as you get higher level, your light armor will get higher and higher maximum dex bonuses. So the higher level I get, the higher my maximum dexterity bonus will be on armor, where the endgame armors have 26, and you're still a Warforge with Mithril Body with 5. And that means your dodge chance is 5% on a Mithril Body Warforge, where everyone else is 26. So your friends, who are playing as regular races like you know the like a fleshy race avoid 25 to 27 percent of hits and you avoid five percent of hits so you just get a hit five times more often than they do isn't that neat uh, shouldn't we ever do slayers and epics sometimes i don't do heroic slayers usually we, well you know i have a lot of dogs uh, most being mixed breeds are dogs and breeders who don't, they don't do the incest thing for best traits. Again, I don't 
I don't know much about dogs and dog breeding. That is extremely far outside of my wheelhouse. I know almost nothing about breeding. Like, I've played the Pokemon games, and in those, I don't even know how the breeding works, to be honest. Uh, there's like a thing where when you breed it, you can specifically move abilities and IVs. I don't know, dude. Uh, what build am I doing now? So, right now, uh, that sounded like chainmail. Quest received. The ring. Uh, right now, I am doing a Stormsinger Bard for solo. Fiddle battle, my ears hurt. Hardcore gimmick, it is the same as Hardcore 2. There's a different set of champions. A bigger alignments in DDO. Alignments matter for your class selection. That's about it. And also for resistances to a couple spells. Okay, anyway. Heal Dryad while Dryad tanks this thing. And she kills it, and we're good. I put a pillar between myself and the skeleton because oh, plus one chain shirt. Let's -a go. It's a me, chain shirt, yo. With cold resistance. Heck yeah. You're not shocked. Trim knows nothing about breeding. Hey, I. <laughs> you're, I you're saying. Oh, you. You rascal. Um. But generally, you just don't really want to be good unless you have to because you're playing the game, so you can choose your own alignment. Uh, but some monsters will cast evil spells that specifically affect good characters, and that is the extent of being good. So unless you have to be good, you usually don't want to be good. And right now, due to statistical reasons, being either lawful or chaotic has more of an advantage uh, because there's a stat called imbue, and it's, it's something you get later. But basically, if you're chaotic, you're subject to the spell uh, Order's Wrath, which is a law spell. And if you are lawful, you're subject to the spell Chaos Hammer, which is a Chaos spell. Order's Wrath is cast by like three monsters in the whole game. And Chaos Hammer is cast by a very common demon called a Hezru, and also many enemies in the video game, and is very deadly. If you are lawful and you get hit by Chaos Hammer, you take a huge amount of damage, and uh, it can be game or character ending right there. So you gotta be careful about that. Oh, a belt I don't need, and the end of the quest? Let's go. Now, I'm actually not going to be recalling because I'm going to get the last two locations, which are right up here, and you can get it by running up here and leaving. When a mommy Pokemon and a daddy Pokemon love each other very much, they do things. We can't talk about what those things are. Readers like to inbreed dogs and cats for desired or cute traits, but it both certain intelligence and health problems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how you get like all these specific, specific dog breeds in Breeden. So there's two more locations right here and then the scout post. So I'm going to go up here, get the scout post, and then I'm going to go down and get the other location. It's going to give me just a smidgen XP and maybe enough to get to level three. Is he good because you're a nice person? Um, I mean, yeah. That's also an option. So we get the Devour scout post. I guess it's the watchful vigil. I always call it scout post. I don't know exactly why. It's like an outpost for where you scout from. Oh, the way I put strings together in my mind is uh, interesting. Let's just say that. Swing speed rat with the munchkin cat and with the Persian cat. Yeah. Again, I don't know much about dog breeds. Can't use Sirith because you're not good. You, you can't you use Sirith with use mesh device, the bypass. The and boom, that's level up, baby. And goings of the that's level three. Citizens from this level three world. gives me access to Quicken. I'm gonna apply Quicken to my spell-like abilities, so they cast very fast and are very powerful. You don't necessarily need to take Quicken right away, um, but I find it's very helpful for some of the early spell-like abilities. Also, at level 3, I will be getting Shout, and Quickened Maximized Shout is nice. I will also be taking um, Empower, but Empower I'll be taking later, because getting the faster cast speed is more impactful. And I literally don't want any of these, so I'm going to leave the rewards here. You'll be 32. That's not too bad on a, on a character, or in most cases. And now I have Bardic Inspiration, which gives me more skills. Now, you'll notice I haven't actually talked to a vendor yet, and that's because by waiting, my Haggle is higher, so I get more gold when I sell. And I get Bardic Inspiration, an ability which will allow me to um, 
get more money when I sell things. Now we take Quicken the Spell. And I get another spell here. I think I will take regular Sonic Blast. Because it's not that bad and it can be quite helpful here. For some extra damage. So I, have, so I might even be able to start casting spells like for real, for real soon. And I have action points to spend. I'm going to finish off taking Sonic Blast here. And then... Uh, I want to get Lightning Strike, so my spell has a chance to deal extra damage. So, and since I have two more points left, I'm going to grab Electrocution for some spell power, and then Lightning Strike here. Nice. Again, I will be resetting this tree soon with the new Sonic Blast. You have to make sure you update your spell-like abilities when you get new higher point values versions of them. And there, now when I cast Heal, boom, it's nearly instantaneous. So that's way better for me. I just want to be able to quickly get my health up uh, and get my character back to normal. Also, when you get new abilities, you want to make sure you go into the uh, build or the feat menu and get the abilities like Bardic Inspiration and now put that on my event action bar. Also, what's up, Brackart Raiders? Welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic time. How are you doing? How was the stream? Hope things are good. This is an iconic tiefling because it makes better sounds. So we use Bardic Inspiration and we sell. So I wait and then boom. Now everything's worth more to sell. Uh, I don't need this or this or this. Uh, I can use this longsword, so I'm actually going to equip it for now because I'm still going to be meleeing stuff a little bit, um, but I want to get closer to spell casting items as soon as I can. Spell casting items are items that give bonus to spell power, which is more relevant to my character. Uh, this doesn't help me. Devotion is healing spell power, so that's real good, so I want that. Sell all my gems. And that should be okay. I don't need any of this other stuff. This Still all this. Now, a couple things I do want to do. I do want to make sure I have resistance potions because I don't have any elemental resistance myself. I also want to make sure I have my ingredients bag gathering stuff. If you talk to Beaudry Cardamon in the harbor, he will give you a collectible bag for picking up all those pesky collectibles. You can have them auto gather. And then if you also go up here and talk to this guy, Fitzpat the Fence, he will give you a gem bag which will hold all of the gems. It's a small gem bag, so it doesn't hold a whole lot, but it holds a little, and that's pretty good. It's good enough. I'm going to buy a slightly higher level hireling so it goes a bit faster. So morning. Is it morning? Is that what time it is? Oh yeah, it must be pretty late for you. Damn, you streamed late in the evening. What's up with that? I'm gonna grab uh, Erethin Beridin as my new level 3 hireling, and we're gonna go into the next quest on an adventure. I will be going to buy some uh, electric resistance potions for future quests, but this is good enough for now. Also, my phone is buzzing, so why is my phone buzzing? I just want to check if there's something important and nothing crazy, so we're good. Okay, so, something I didn't explain that I should. So when you use your bard song, you have to play out this animation. And then you get the bard buff. But here's a trick that will save you a lot of time. Because when you want to apply that bard buff with all of these cool abilities to everyone in your party, that literally takes 30 seconds to a minute. That's crazy. So let's make it faster. If you press the button and then tumble, it cancels the animation, but doesn't cancel the effect. So you'll notice here, my timer is like close to seven minutes. I press the button, press block, and then move to tumble. And now, boom, it just reset the duration because I got the effect again. This is very cool. You can use it to buff yourself quick and others quickly. It's the tumble trick. Now you know about the tumble trick. The guards with ease. The so congratulations, you now know about the tumble trick and how to do it. And that also works pretty well. Yeah. That's true. I am I am not as much of a Night Owl. I do stay up late irresponsibly, but I wouldn't call myself a Night Owl. Also, Charleston, thank you so much for the 300 bits. It's very kind of you. You're doing well, and I hope your day is going good. Now you're noticing that my spell damage is actually a lot higher, and because I cast the spell so quickly, I can kind of weave it in between when I'm doing other stuff. So I can cast the spell, attack, attack, cast the spell, attack, attack. So now you're going to notice the spell casting is much more impactful than it was before. Squibbles and Doggo Argentino are bred specifically for the size, power... Power to be some bags like to use them in dog fights. Yeah, that sucks. Also, that is a bonus of the spell singer. Randomly, when I cast sonic spells, I will just hit him with a bonus slam of lightning damage, which is cool. Frogo killed your bard. How did Frogo kill your bard? What? Ow. Yeah. 
idea when someone would be demanding to know the breed of your dog, which was a boxer. You thought it was a pit bull. Idiots and pit bulls are giant puppies and raised by decent folks. Yeah, my understanding is that when it comes to dogs, the attitude of dogs is very heavily dependent. Like, obviously, like certain mannerisms are different, but the attitude, whether they are, you know, peaceful or not, is a freaking one. All right. And now to get through here, I don't have dexterity, I don't have wisdom, and I don't have intelligence. So I walk away. Actually, I have a wisdom guy right here. Go, Erethin. There we go. I think the guy was missing all of those stats. Amazing. And now I have to fight three guys at the same time, but I get an extra treasure chest. If you're wondering why I'm picking up collectibles, it's because collectibles can be used for candy crafting. You can trade them in town for, like, items. And also, finally, there's a chance to get something called a Eberron Dragon Shard Fragment, and you can trade those in for experience point potions. Also, I just picked up Gloves of Magnetism, which is for my lightning spell damage when I get my lightning strike, and Healing Amplification, which is awesome. You guy here following your vid for 200 Paladin. Is there, any, uh, is there anything that has changed since your guide came out that I should know about? Uh, do you know the date of the video? I ask because I have a lot of videos about two-handed Paladin. So I can give you an answer, but I don't know how old the video is. Uh, bucklers are basically free, so it's just free defense, so I will be using a buckler with this character as well. At Hardcore Server, new character? Yes. Um, I have a series on my YouTube channel, which is Solo Fighter Leveling Guide, with the goal of uh, helping people learn how to play the game by themselves. Um, and I want to do a spellcaster, by contrast, where the fighter was big, beefy, and tanky. This character is small and fragile, uh, so we can compare. Um, now that I have the chance, I'm going to be buying some electric resistance potions. So using my Bardic Inspiration and Tumbling, so I get the buff uh, to save me some cash. So it's a little bit less expensive. And I'll be buying like 30 of these because I'm going to be chugging them all of the time. So I'm not even worried about that. And then second, uh, because I'm here, I'm also going to be buying 10 Eagle Splendor potions. I'll be getting more later. Um, but now with these Eagle Splendor potions, I can automatically get... Uh, a light, slightly higher DC for my Sonic Blast, because my Sonic Blast is 18. This will bring it up to 20, so monsters will fail their save more often and get stunned by my stuff, which is good. Uh, traps seem like a big deal. How will your fighter handle those? So in my solo fighter guide, the solution is know where they are and jump over them or eat them. Um, because your character, you're just starting out, you're going to be playing quests on normal difficulty, which means when you run into a trap, it's not going to kill you right away. So as long as you've got the shield, you can eat the trap, go through it, and then remember, okay, there is a trap here. And then the next time you do it on hard mode, you get to that same room, you go, okay, there's a trap here. And you're like already prepared for it. And then when you get to elite difficulty, you got hit by the trap on normal. You maybe ate it a second time on hard and we're like, whoops, and we had to be careful. But then when you get to elite difficulty, you're like, dude, I know this trap is. And then you try to dodge it and six immediately fail and still take the damage but you feel you feel like you tried you know and that's really what matters um important note while i would recommend checking out the fighter solo are milling it's like space beyond. easily 30 hours of video at this point if not more so i'm not going to say go watch 30 hours of video you, you can it's a great video but you know, if you get stuck, you have somewhere where you can check out. Like, if you get to level 5 and you don't know what to do, there's options that'll be there. In this quest, the Smuggler's Warehouse, is a pro tip. You do not need to break every single gem or box looking for the gems. Only the barrels can contain Smuggler's gems. This potion's helpful on Hardcore Server? Yeah, maybe. I'm not going to be doing Snow Peaks as part of this guide. I'm just going to be collecting the keys and then transferring over to the main server so I can do it later. The reason why I'm not gonna be doing the Snow Peaks as part of this guide is because if you're watching this and it's not Snow Peaks, you won't be able to run the event. So that's not gonna be very helpful now, is it? So this sentry, instead of attacking it, if you let it run away, it opens up this door and now there's extra monsters in here we can deal with. Sometimes there's a rare and the rare will have like extra items and stuff, but this guy did not. Also, you're gonna notice I move around a lot in combat. Don't stand still. Standing still is how you get hit by lightning. Only barrels have gems. Who knew? I knew. Switch Dr. Diesel, beat him up, and that rare monster, Shaman, gone. Easy game. The shield? It's a shield of resonating? Why is it a heavy shield? I can't bypass the arcane spell failure. No way to do that. 
There's two shamans, one up here and one in the corner. Again, don't stand still. You're going to eat lightning bolts for breakfast. And that's pretty much it. You're also going to notice I jump a lot when I cast. So the reason why you jump and you cast is when I'm casting a spell on the ground, my character slows to a crawl. But if I jump, I can move at full speed through the air. It's called jump casting, and it's something that if you're a spellcaster, you should get very used to. It's another reason why I improved my jump skill when I played or when I started, and why I'm going to keep my jump skill high. Another reason why I also use my inspire on myself. I don't usually need skill points for most things, but getting four extra points of jump is really nice when I just need to clear an obstacle. That hires on timers from four years ago. Man, those hirelings are committed. Never leave a job. Here, there's a trap. Just when you get to here, this bit, just jump. Jump. Is the beginner basics paladin class is about a year old? Yep, that's fine. Beginner basics paladin is perfectly good. No changes. No notes. It's just great. It's a good paladin build. It gets you to rock your way through the game. You should have a good time with it. This fighter has a lot of hits. You're gonna notice these glancing blows where you see these like, you know, attacks with like these weird like kind of slanty bits on them. Uh, that's because um, I didn't actually hit. Um, Didio has a glancing blow mechanic where if you don't high roll high enough, um, it'll make a glancing blow where you do some amount of damage, but not a lot. You're old already? I know, time flies. Yes, Will, you are getting older. I saw a thing, it was like a tweet or something, and somebody was like, like, I didn't feel old until I went to the liquor store and somebody was like, oh, can I check your ID? And they were like, oh yeah, no problem. So they gave them their ID over and they handed it back like instantaneously. And they're like, oh, you know, you could, I guess you you knew I looked pretty old. And the person said, oh, no, I just saw the number 19. So I give it back. I was like, oh, mm hmm, mm hmm, yep, mm hmm, yep, yep, oh, yeah. Oh, that hits you right in the old, right in the aging. That's where it gets you, right in the aging. I missed a ruby, did I? Ah, uh, it sounds probable. I am tired. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. So I'll get back and get one. Also, usually I drink rogue energy every day. And I just didn't today because I don't really have a particular reason. Did I miss a ruby? You also could just say you missed a ruby. And then I'll go back and check. And then... Lose my mind. Well, if I missed a ruby, I didn't see it. Missed a potion of cure modern wounds. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, also, when you break stuff, you'll often get like potions and rewards. Um, if you want those things, you can easily go get them. Just pick them up off the ground. This trap is a blade on both sides. Find the line in the middle, like so. Gotcha. Uh, a nice thing about Sonic Blast is the damage of Sonic Blast does not go down um, if the monster makes their save. So you just keep blasting people with it. As long as you have spell power, it works really good. You get Frogo to disable that one. Yeah, Frogo is a hireling you get for buying the Collector's Edition of Salt Marsh, which is a rogue hireling that is level 3 that disables pretty much every earth trap in the early game. It's quite good. Um, but you have to buy Collector's Salt Marsh, which I think is $60. It goes on sale every once in a while, though. <laughs> There's my last Smuggler's Ruby, and the quest is over. As I said, the leveling experience is going to look relatively slow at this point, which is appropriate. It, it is kind of slow in comparison. But once I get access to Shout, I promise you, this will go much, much, much faster. Also, um, Spellcasters gain a lot of their damage from leveling. Um, so that's kind of... Important fact to know. Uh, looking here, Acrobats of Resonance, 51. So that's a good backup. I will keep this Resonance 51. That's a lot of damage. Do forever. Uh, I just saw this game. Took it forever. That is what I get for waiting 10 years to play it. Oh, yeah, absolutely, dude. DDO's coming on up on its 17-year anniversary tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, next month. So you've you waited some time, but it it's still good. Alright, this quest has 
um, an ogre, which is scary, and kobold shamans. You could go that way, or you could skip all of that section by climbing this box to climb up here. If you break that box, you'll need enough jump to climb over the wall, and I don't have that. Did they still update this game? You bet. Um, there's actually three new classes coming out next month. The Dark Hunter, the um, uh, Acolyte of the Skin, and the Blight Caster. They hella update this game, man. There's so many cool features you missed. Oh, it's so good. But you're, in my personal opinion, uh, obviously I'm biased, but I've been playing this game through the entirety of DDO's history. In my opinion, I think that right now, DDO is in the best place it has ever been in the entire time it's been alive. So if you are like, did you miss the greatness? Is it over? Is the golden age done? No, we're in the golden age of DDO. DDO is shorthand for Dungeons and Dragons Online. I just don't want to say Dungeons and Dragons Online every time, so I will shorten it to DDO almost every single time. Or what we will get for the 17th birthday? I don't know. Yeah, there's the anniversary event. There's always something there. I just don't know what's going to be there. I don't really think about what we will get. I find it interesting that gamers have this idea that, like, there's an anniversary event in the game, so they the gamers will get something, as opposed to, like, the developers celebrating the experience for themselves. I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing. I just find it it's, it's interesting that people have been conditioned that way. Like, if the anniversary event happens, we get to play the event, but they didn't give us, like, a gift. There was no special, like, reward for the 17-year anniversary. I would be okay with that. I have a feeling there's a lot of people that wouldn't be okay with that. The developers get a paycheck? Probably. I hope they don't get paid yearly. Question. This one is one of them pay-to-win types. What does the word pay-to-win mean? This is not me being facetious, but pay-to-win is very subjective. So, what if... When you say pay to win, what does that mean to you? For example, in World of Warcraft, you can buy a level boost to become level 50, so you can start playing the new expansion right away. Is that pay to win? If so, you can also buy experience boosts in Dungeons & Dragons Online. So you may think of that as pay to win. But experience points is the bare minimum you get for playing the game by doing anything and touching the keyboard. So I don't personally consider purchasing experience points pay to win because literally that's the most simple thing you get and acquire in the game and there's no challenge involved in it. So I don't think of that as pay to win. It's one of the reasons why I don't really answer the pay to win question because like I don't know what is pay to win to you. I assume it started out as a way to thank players for sticking with the game. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Blood Knuckles Smasher. Also, they sell the content. Um, it has an I win button that you can spend money on. It does. There is an item in the store that you can buy called the uh, button of winning, or at least it used to be there. When you bought it, it would play a sound that would say, you win, DDO. It was very cool. All right, now I'm going to do Stealthy Repossession. I'm going to show you guys how to stealthily repossess. This quest can be quite scary, and I know many people have a very difficult experience running through this quest. My fighter, it was very sketchy, the experience. Hopefully this one will be a little bit better. Let's see. Basically any game. Yeah. Again, that's the reason why I asked this specific question is, what do you consider pay to win? Because there is no objective answer for pay to win. And also another important note, if you think there is an objective answer to, the, to what is pay to win, you do not know what the word objective means. You wonder whether washed kobolds would sell any better. Which is okay. The, you know, everybody needs to learn words at some point. Destiny 2 being offline for 12 hours and people were losing their shit? Yes. Admittedly, and I've said this before, even though Ludacris disagrees with me, Destiny 2 player base are a huge, huge, huge legion of crybabies. Right? So, like, I don't think that paying to increase the speed in which you progress through a video game is pay to win, because progression is the simplest aspect of a video game. You play the game to progress. So if somebody pays to skip some of that experience, are they winning? Well, they're just skipping the experience of playing the game. If skipping the experience of playing the game is somehow winning, I find that interesting. So that's why I, you know, I don't really 
care too much about that as a general concept from the perspective of paying to win. Oh man, that sucks. I was really hoping I would kill that. And I did not. I also went the wrong way. That's good. Kill that. Hopefully there's no kobold right behind me. There is. There's a warrior. Not a big deal. The more of them that wake up, the more they wake up the other kobolds that are nearby. I need to be careful about that. No, stop. I think he hit it. That sucks. Here, and just kill a lot of the kobolds. I'm not killing all of them. I'm just killing many of them. It's okay. Excuse me. Go. Grab this, and grab the Eye of Kyber. Now that I have this, I'm going to pull my Hireling to me, so we can fight together, and just basically try to dodge lightning. I'm going to put the Shamans around corners, so I don't have to deal with them, and just start killing and meleeing all the monsters. Make this quest look easy. That is one of the benefits of playing the game for a long time. I'm not athletic, right? I can't do anything cool. I can't, uh, I'm no rock climber. I can't lift very heavy things. Um, so whenever I go and I watch, like, uh, a performance of, you know, an artist, somebody who's like a physical artist, so a dancer or somebody with incredible, like, a, like ability to move their body. It's super impressive to me because they make everything look easy. If you've never seen somebody do like an acrobatics routine, they make it look easy and it's so straightforward. I love it. Um, I think that's so cool, but I can't do any of that stuff, but I can make it look like the video games I'm playing look easy because I have that skill. Now you might you know, the question is, does that skill have value? You know what? I, I don't I don't want to think about it. Let's not think about that. That's good. Good. Let's move move past. Uh, can a game that's not PvP focused be pay to win? In my opinion, I don't think so. But to the opinions of many, I think I think a lot of people would disagree with that statement. There's a new player base? Yeah. The reason why I say that is because like when the game is down for the video game you like to play, just go play another game. It's not a big deal. Sometimes the game is down. It does suck, but the game is down. It's not a big deal. That's the nature of dealing with an always online MMORPG. Sometimes the game is down. It's all good. Single target sonic blasting? Heck yeah, dude. It's so good. And you guys can't do banned for duping. Did he win? Yeah, that was that's one of the best Steam reviews for DDO. Is that that review where the guy talks about how he he spent thousands upon thousands of dollars and then he got banned for duping some stuff. Well, if you were already spending thousands of dollars on the video game, why are you duping stuff? Why would you risk your account like that? It seems unnecessary to me. I don't know. Pay to win can sometimes make the free to play experience worse in order to push players towards the store. First thing about pay to win non PvP games. Yep, 100%. And there are elements that I think, you know, the game could do better. We've talked about this before when it comes to pay to play, but there was somebody who, on one of my videos that I put out for the Solo Fighter, in a very. They just, they just went off. They went on a huge tangent about how the game is garbage and how they hate it because they paid for the VIP subscription and then there were still things that were locked away from them in the game. They couldn't pick all the classes because they paid for the VIP subscription and they found they had to still buy them in the store, at which point they just literally went ballistic and were like, this is the worst experience ever. I hate this. I'm going to tell all my friends they should be ashamed. I'm going to sue them. I'm calling the police. I made that last one up. But pretty much everything else I said, you know, they were going to tell all their friends and everything else. It was this really long, like, wall of text that I didn't really read. Um, but the problem is the statements, a lot of them are wrong. Uh, I'm backing up, by the way, because this thing will kill me with fireball. Um, so I'm doing and magic missile, so I'm just coming back here so it does not do that. A lot of the statements, as much as I can be conscious and aware that they are um, incorrect about the game, the feeling that this person had, the emotions they felt were not wrong, right? They were upset and they had a negative experience because they played the game, they paid for the service, and yet the game asked them to give them more money. Now. The thing is, Video is more like a classic game where you unlock things as you play. You unlock the Favorite Soul class by doing quests. You unlock the Artificer the class SSG by doing The SSG crew are like little babies that and need so safe spaces. I, I really hate if it when I'm in the middle of saying something important. If you can't handle people saying that your game is P2W, then don't make a blatant 
in your face, shameful P2W server. I would have I, zero I, some, problems. Most of the time, I'm, I'm usually okay with it. But really nice. to fix the game, but they are not. But thank you for your the dollar. Eat fat, live in nice houses, drive fancy cars, and most likely date attractive people from our money, while we get mild epilepsy from their horrible product. That's the uh, the Steam review. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, the issue is DDO is more of a traditional video game in which you are. Um, Copium. You know, you can unlock things in the game. And so the game doesn't tell you you can unlock the favorite soul through play. It tells you, oh, you don't own it. You have to buy it, which can make somebody think that they have to buy it because that's what it tells you. And so it's bad communication, and SSG can do better about that. And it's something that they have floundered on in the past. And I'm not metal disagreeing with that at all. But it's also difficult because then people get the wrong perception, and as I said, they think that you have to pay for more things in the game than you actually do. So, it's kind of unfortunate how that happens sometimes, but what are you going to do? It is what it is. I am betting this review gets me a Burma ban because SSG hates the truth. This isn't the first time their dev team failed miserably either. Wayfinder is a ghost town because they banned its best player for throwing pumpkin heads years ago. Then they banned a guy who spent $62,000 on their game because he duped a few items. He plays Never Winter now. That's right. Never Winter. Old Never Winter. Thank you for the dollar. Appreciate it. You see a pack that has been unceremoniously discarded ah. inside a brazier. It's fourth edition. I don't have a lot of experience in different I'm gonna play it at some point. This will be a big project, but I think having a visual overhaul of the favorite screen, I just the mouse ahead of you to, uh, ahead of time with like little dots and progress bars. Yeah, they could most of the UI in this game could stand for to have an overhaul. So we're just gonna get going and do Dirk's got a secret. Uh, I don't really need to spend any of my points. I think the only place I'm gonna spend my points right now is in your light wounds. Just have like a shorter cooldown on this so I can heal in case I take a little bit more damage. But it's of that doesn't matter. Uh, once I get to level four and one point is when I'm gonna be making a shift and spending some more points in other places in the trees. But uh, not yet, not yet. The reason why I wanna make that adjustment then is because I wanna be able to take Shout um, fully and also possibly just have like a, a point or two in Sonic Blast. Uh, so that's important. Why not take more spell points? Uh, I have yet to run out. I will be taking more spell points, but in the early game, I have yet to run out. Everything dies in usually one hit, and I, even my melee damage is enough to kill the kobolds. So realistically, it's not that big of a deal having to take down some of these things. But you're right. I could if I wanted to. Um, I could if I wanted to get the extra spell points. It's something I will be taking when I do my, my reorganization. I'm just not there yet. Your wounds. Maximize. Quick in as I'm walking backwards. We're good. As I said, it's going to be slower to level this character than it would be another character for quite a while, like a fighter or any type of melee, because I don't have, like, the AoE. My fighter, when I leveled through this, had uh, strike through and could just strike through all of these monsters and just rip through them. Uh, this character does not have that ability. However, one, I can get rid of oozes by being able to just spam spells at them. And oh, just you wait till I get some of that AoE. Oh, it's going to be so good. Uh, Sonic Blast used to be AoE, and it was very, very, very strong. Um, but it was changed. Um, according to the developers, they said that Sonic Blast was supposed to be a single target spell, and not an area of effect spell, and so they changed it to a single target. Um, now, I can't tell you uh, about the motivations, if that's a true motivation for why they changed it, because also, it was the best level 1 spell in the game. So there could have also been an ulterior motive of they wanted to reduce the power level. But I do have a spell compendium behind me. And yes, in the 3.5 spell compendium, the level 1 spell Sonic Blast available to bards and sorcerers and wizards is a single target spell. That is literally true. So what they said is true and is not false. Um, I just think there possibly was like an ulterior motive, like adjusting the actual power level, but it is what it is. Also, it's a bad scot. How were you? How are you today? Today. Hopefully you're doing good. Doing pretty good. I got my coffee, so I'm going to be drinking some coffee during this, because, you know, you got to have some coffee. I got some water uh, for when I need to get flush the coffee out of my system. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think I'm going to kill the troglodyte that's here, just for a little bit of extra extra treasure. 
up your AoE damage by bringing Nimeth. I could bring Nimeth if I was several levels higher. Yeah, you can also still use it to break boxes, which is a it's just it's really weird. I don't know why they did like why they left that in the game. It's cool because it means it's a good box breaking tool. Uh, an important note, because it also has like a little bit of a mini stun, it pretty much just prevents monsters from doing anything and stops them in their tracks. That's why Sonic Blast is overpowered as an AoE. Like imagine hitting an entire room for 40 damage and stunning everything, and you can just do it again and again. On top of that, it's also a will save. And monsters, especially early game monsters, have very bad will saves. Like, damn man. Uh, I did not open this door, but it's okay, because there's no muck here. So, how do you get through this door? There is a fire trap here. Because I have a hireling, I can just tell my hireling, Hey, hireling, go pull that lever. <clears throat> go pull that valve. Go do it. Go do it. And then she gets hit by the trap, and then I can walk through. Won't, won't, muck won't spawn until the door is open. Is that true? I actually don't know. I'm just going to assume that I didn't make a mistake because it makes me feel better. It helps soothe my ego. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, uh, Muck doesn't. Uh, muck would spawn, and you would know about it, uh, obviously. Yeah, if it doesn't spawn until you open the door, I mean, yeah, it is. It, it, I mean, that, you know. Hey, what are you going to do? Oh, dude, I just got a fortification shield. Which is better than what I'm currently using, because my shield does not do fortification. That's awesome for this level, so I'm very happy about this. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll take it. Uh, also, it looks like I'm stuck and I can't leave this quest. So, um, sometimes you're going to get stuck on a loading screen. To tell if you're stuck on a loading screen, I type slash log out into the keyboard. You can type actually on loading screens. Because the important thing to remember with a loading screen is a loading screen just hides the ugly parts of loading and unloading the game. So this looks ugly where it unloads all the assets and then it's supposed to reload you somewhere else. So it's just a cover. So you can actually still access a lot of the game aspects. Like I can still do stuff. I can't move because I'm frozen. Uh, I have to re-log to fix this. Uh, that will happen sometimes. But it's a good way to tell if you're actually stuck on a loading screen or not. Uh, is to do that. So that's a good part of the video. The relogging section. Oh, yeah. Also, Tensor's Weapon Boxes and Wishes of Inheritance are on sale. Hmm, cool. Uh, I hate both of those things. I think that um, items from raids should be bound to account and not bound to character. So uh, I think that is something that should be changed. And I also think that... Um, so Wishes of Inheritance, in my opinion, is strictly greed. They could make the video game better, but Samsung Games chooses not to, to make more money. Um, and I think that the Tensor's boxes are a only exist because it is so tedious and boring to actually get yourself a, a fully upgraded sentient weapon. Getting a pretty good sentient weapon is not too bad. Getting a max sentient weapon takes a very, very long time. Um, and with the current way the sentient weapons work, I don't love it. Magnetic Club is pretty good. Resonating Gloves, also pretty good. I will take the Magnetic Club for now, because that might be useful. Important note, because I am a spellcaster, I need spellcaster items, and so that's what I want to be looking for is spellcaster items when possible. Uh, put this on. So now I've got the new fortification buckler, so I can't be critically struck. I'm actually just going to do a quick sell here. I investigate a couple items because I just want to make sure I don't have a lot of strength. I have a resonance necklace for level four, also very good. So I'm gonna lock that as well, so I don't sell that by accident. For a weekly coupon for a bell of opening, instant open. Oh, sick! That's like one of the best weekly coupons they do. So resonating heavy shield, cool, but I can't deal with the arcane spell failure, so I'm just gonna sell that out of the game. Cool weapons, quarter staff that sucks. Exorcist boots. I cast the spell. Uh, that's medium armor. That's a bad item. Uh, healing of false life is amazing, so that's very cool. And I don't need the rest of this. Uh, actually, I'll keep this. I resist. There we go. Now I have some money. Uh, I also forgot to do my inspiration, which is one of the reasons why I still also put points into Hagel. You'll notice how I have already 2,000 platinum, or my fighter didn't even have close to this uh, much when I got to this point. So, it's nice. Gets is 10. You can currently get 10 filigree slots on your weapon. 
and uh, four on an artifact for a total of 14 separate filigrees. Uh, and this is a storm singer bard. Infamous butcher's path, a gauntlet that has inspired. Go. Gonna drink my potion of resist electricity before I run around the corner here, and then I start going in on the shamans. Important note for the early game: if you want to make sure you don't die to kobold shamans, it's really easy. Just get yourself a potion of resist electricity, and you will be fine. On Reaper mode, you will not be fine, because they will still do high enough damage to go above that, but in Heroics, that will heavily reduce the amount of damage that you take. Even if you get double hit, the most you can take, I think, is 20. Um, so I wouldn't really worry about it if you are playing, you know, a any type of solo character you're worried about getting killed. Just buy some of these potions. They're pretty inexpensive from the market. And as I said, um, it's about, I think it's like 40 platinum per potion. So looting like one chest will give you, at every chest will give you 40 platinum. So every chest you loot gives you some money. Um, that usually more than that items sell for like 100 each. So uh, you can get some platinum and then just trade it for all the stuff you need. Can you swap filigree and sentient weapons? You can with an item called a sentience toolkit, which is found in the DDO store. It is a irritating and tedious process. Um, what I would like to see, and it's the reason why people usually only use one weapon at endgame, because swapping all the stuff over is not something you can do in combat, and it is also not something you can do inexpensively. Uh, I would like to see them take these sentient jewels out of weapons and put it as a slot on your character, so you could swap out your jewels at will if you wanted to, and then have weapons be separate, so you can also swap weapons at will, so you don't feel like you're locked into one weapon at a time, which I think would be a better system overall. So this room has three kobold shamans, one on the right, left, and middle. I'm going to always go for the right one here and kick kick its ass right away. So it's gone. Go for the left one because the other kobolds are crowding around. Take him down. And then go for the middle one at the back. Again, just kind of ignoring a lot of the melee kobolds because they don't do a terribly high amount of damage. I can always heal it off, so it's not that big of a deal. Or just make sentient toolkits like one plat in the vendor. Yeah, but they make money off of it. And again, this is one of the reasons why it's difficult to talk about some of the things that Sandstone Games does, because as much as I say it's bad and I don't want them to do it, I don't know how much money they make off of those systems, and if they make enough money where it's actually kind of a big deal for them to make a change like that, I mean, that does kind of matter, right? I don't know. Oh, so you're going to notice I don't really take a lot of damage from these kobolds? That is Bracers of Spearbane, baby. Just get spear block and you'll be very, very happy with yourself. Countless kobolds scratch and Fifty thousand platinum, good plat sync. Honestly, that would be cool. Like even if it was like a hundred thousand platinum per toolkit, dude, I would buy that stuff all day. I would buy tons and tons of those. Absolutely. I really, uh, I didn't realize this was another solo guided playthrough. You didn't realize that, but that's what the title says. That's what I said when I started streaming. It's what it looks like when I have my my hireling with me and why I'm taking so long to kill everything. When it comes from tomes and XP stuff, I imagine that the the hot items are autos boxes uh, and experience point potions would probably be what I I would guess they make the most money off of. Important note: I also have no problem with experience point potions. Playing DDO is not hard, which is to say, like, it's fun to log in and play the game. It's fun to do the quest. So using XP potions to level faster really doesn't take anything away from other people. Um, it's just something you can do. And it's not like, like, oh, I have to level through the game. Like, yeah, it's playing the game. Playing the game is fun. So, again, I don't have an issue with XP potions. Conceptually, it's perfectly fine. Um, it's the other stuff that's just, like, badly designed systems to make force people to use the store. I don't like that as much. I thought it was taking us on because Bard is nerfed, gutted, ruined, hamstrung. I don't I don't think people say it's hamstrung. They do say slap in the face, they do say gutted. It is very fun to go run and read the DDO forms about how everything gets gutted and destroyed. Ruined. I've been sales since people grabbing a lot in impatient grabbing from the store. I actually don't think they make a lot from augment sales, because I think augment sales are kind of just like chipping away at people's savings. The people that are probably buying augments more often, I would assume, are people engaging in some of the systems, and that would mean people who are higher level, and that would mean people who have just like DDO points chilling. Like, I buy tons of augments at the DDO store, but I literally buy nothing. 
Like, I, I or pay for nothing. I just use the points that I earn, because every past life that you run is going to be between 600 and 800 DDO points, um, which is, like, at three augments right away. So if I don't buy three endgame augments, then I've already made my money back. It's not a big deal. Get him. I am going to use the shrine over here, because I need it. And yes, Astral Shards. I forgot Astral Shards is also uh, a big, a big, uh, expensive purchase. They probably do make a lot of money off of Astral Shards. That's that one. There's another Grey Ooze here. There's two Invisible Grey Oozes. There's a third Grey Ooze. There's a third one. I'm not attacking you with my weapon because it does, it oozes break swords. And I don't want to have to repair my sword, so I'm just going to cast my spell. Just my spell-like ability. It's on cooldown. I'm going to slowly cast it. Okay, yeah. Uh, hireling weapons don't break, so you can have your hireling just beat it up. Which is nice. Airships and amenities and expansion packs. Yeah, I think expansion packs they also make a bunch of money off of. And again, it's important to note that the reason why they sell expansion packs is because they sell expansion packs for cash. They don't sell, ex like, they do sell them in the store, DDO store, for, after six months for the points. But they sell them initially for cash. Um, expansion packs are a way to raise capital. You need money, and so people being able to earn the points to be able to buy the expansion packs is good. But like, if you're a for-profit company and you have staff that you have to pay for, like you you need the money. So at, you, that's why they sit, uh, make it so you can only um, buy them with cash for the first six months, because it's a huge cash infusion. For two reasons: one, even at like forty bucks, forty bucks a user is not bad. Consider that there's probably probably close to like seventy-five thousand unique users. 75,000 to 100,000 unique users per month at on Dungeons and Dragons Online. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, that's a lot of people who are going to be possibly buying some of the expansions. And then, on top of that, um, you have the uh, improved editions, the collector's edition, the ultimate fan bundle. There are a lot of whales in the DDO community, uh, and there also are a lot of people who just buy the higher editions because they want to support the game anyway. So, Hire's weapons break. Uh, I've never seen a hireling weapon, hireling weapon break in a long time. This is a solo bard playthrough. Yes, it is. And someone has someone that rerolls chess. Oh yeah, a lot of people buy them. I actually don't really buy astral shards. Uh, I have some, but that's because I don't know why I have astral shards right now. I didn't buy them to reroll chess. Oh, it's because of the traveler's trunks. Yeah. All right. So now that I'm level four. I'm going to be doing a. I'm going to be taking my level real quick and doing a respec of my enhancement trees to increase my character's power. What is a whale? Someone with a lot of money. Somebody that spends a lot of money. A lot of games that are heavy in microtransactions um, are dependent on whales. Uh, people who spend a lot of the money. Think about all the fish in the sea. The big fish are the whales. They're technically not fish at all, but you know, we don't don't worry about that. All right, get some I have charisma. Yet to see a blue whale use a computer. How does it use a mouse? How does the computer work underwater? Well, because of the whales, so I'm going to take Soundburst here. Uh, Soundburst is an AoE damage spell that does a lot of damage. Uh, and I'm also going to be taking... I think Cure Moderate. I think just having cures generally while leveling is going to be good as a, in case of emergency. Blur is also a pretty good option, but it's such a short duration. I think I will take... I'll take Blur just in case. I think Blur is probably better for now because they have the uh, spell-like ability for close moves. Um... I got Soundburst and I got some other stuff. I'm going to respend my trees here, so I'm going to reset everything. So reset. And we're going to go in here, grab the cure still. I still think it's important to have the cure. Uh, I'm going to grab the extra spell points because spell points are important. I need mana to be able to do stuff. This gives me plus one to all of my DCs for the spells that I cast. So does this. This gives me plus one as well. So that's plus two to my evocation DCs. Huge for this character. Grab some more mana. I can't take the third point because it would give me magical training, which I already have, so I can spend something somewhere else. So instead, I'm going to be grabbing Lingering Songs. This gives you Bardic Inspiration as if you had two more levels of Bard. This usually doesn't matter, but where it does matter is Sustaining Song. I think, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure Sustaining Song heals you based on how many levels of Bard you have. And so this is an extra level of Bard, or two, so that should improve that. And then we're going to grab Shout here. Shout is my new spell-like ability. I will be getting Sonic Blast later. I will be taking it here, but uh, for now, Shout spell-like ability is the spell-like ability that I want, and we are good. So now I have the Cure Light Wounds spell-like ability is still there. 
Uh, I have Blur as a new spell that I can cast on myself for protective purposes, and I have a new AoE spell in the form of Soundburst. And it's going to be quite good, and you're going to see how good it is right now. Uh, Con 3, Natural Armor 3, is really good for 5. I'll take it. Invis can be pretty good for some of the early quests if you know them well. Yeah, I don't know how to Invis through quests, so I'm not going to recommend people do that. If that makes you a guppy, that is correct, yeah. Also, don't feel like, um... He leads you below I, I think this this goes without saying. I think most people understand this. Um, you don't have to spend money, any amount of money you don't want to spend, obviously. Um, you know, if you, if you have available funds and you want to spend additional money on a video game or a service or whatever it is, go for it. You're allowed to spend your money however you want, but also, you know, don't feel bad for people spending money on something. But then the corollary is, while you shouldn't feel bad for not spending money on something, also, try not to be super judgmental about people that do spend money on things. If my general thought is, where's the harm? Um, the if you're not destroying your own life, like throwing all your life savings away, yourself. you're just spending That's free money that you happen to have on something, like where's the problem? Um, books. So when people go like, oh man, I've spent like thousands of dollars on this game. It's like, yeah, but if you can afford it and it makes you happy, where's, where's the harm? You know what I mean? There is harm in microtransactions and a lot of people can get stuck in the cycle of spending more money than they have on these things. So there can be harm. But that's what I'm just asking. Where is the harm? The Go librarian there. has left the room. Quick, anyway, obtain the book. Let's do this quest. Librarian's voice shrieks. I know your, I know true, your true intentions, intentions thief. My so, why is shout so good? It's because it's a frontal AOE that does a lot of damage. See these skeletons? Well, guess what? They're already taking like 50 damage from the shout. That's not bad. Then I can just hit them with the uh, sonic or sound burst afterwards, and bam, the pack is dead. As I get more levels, and specifically more spell power items, as I do not have a sonic spell power item, actually I could get 51 here, that is going to increase my damage heavily. Now, this character doesn't actually have, um, for whatever reason, I don't have enough intelligence to do this. A little silly, you need a 14 intelligence. So I'm going to see if I can get my hireling to hit the rune. No, I can't. But I can come here, and then have the hireling hit the rune. Go Perfect. and turn this off. That way I stay perfectly safe and the hireling is going to hit the button for me. So again, same thing. Teleport the hireling into me and have it hit the rune. Do I have activate, activate maximize? I did. And I get empower at level 6. I just don't have it yet. One of the benefits of bard is you actually don't need to take a lot of the evocation bonus effects in the early game because as a bard uh, you get a whole bunch of bonus evocation DCs just for uh, putting points in the spell singer tree. The rune is blocked. The rune is not blocked. It's literally not blocked. Come on. Here we go. So you can just go and blow that guy up. Please don't judge me for spending many dollars on PoE skins. Yeah, exactly. There's value added to a game by just being in it as a player, even if you aren't spending money. That's the other thing too. Is like free to play games need players, which is why the free to play model exists. Like some people might. Be weirded out by the fact that I said there's like 75 to 100,000 monthly logins, like unique logins on DDO. That might sound really, really crazy, but like I'm not saying these are people that are spending tons of money and SSG is making millions upon millions of dollars a month. Um, they might, they probably do. That's they have a lot of staff. Um, but the um, it's more saying that these are just unique individuals. I would wager that probably half of the people that log in a month don't spend any money on the video game it's free it's on steam if somebody makes a new account they watch a youtube video by a guy named stream tom who's like you know super handsome and, and friendly and you know they're just like wow that's cool i should i should like play this video game and then they like start to play and then uh you know they just log in like a little bit again th these are things this is also part of the player base that needs to be thought about farm home memory for a bottle of smoke top tier early game trinket but i cast blur also farming is boring so I don't want to do any farming. It's like, you know, it's difficult. As they say, uh, inside of everybody, there lives two wolves. And uh, both of the wolves are saying, no, nah, don't do any farming. They're very boring. Do I know the total number of people employed by SSG? I have like a guess. I don't know a total number, but I have a guess. I'm pretty sure that there's something along the lines of like it is time to leave this vile place. 
probably like 15 or 16 people that work on DDO, if I had to guess. I'm pretty sure that that sounds about right. Like 15 or 16 people that work on DDO. Not all of those people work full time because I'm pretty sure that the artists and several of the engineers work on both the Lord of the Rings and Dungeons and Dragons online, both because they, they have to split the resources, obviously, from between their two products. Uh, and I happen to know that they only have one animator who works on both both projects and does all of the animations. Uh, so the animation work takes a lot of time to come through. Um, a skittering sound beneath the floor sets your whose name I down. can't remember off the top of my head, but they're extremely good at what they do. Uh, there's a lot of really cool animations in both video games. And actually, speaking of animations in video games, um, if you haven't played the game The Lord of the Rings Online, there's the uh, there's a raid called the Throne of the Dread Terror, and it is a raid that takes place during the Battle um, of uh, Minas Tirith, where you know the forces of Mordor have already broken down the gates and have invaded the city, and it is essentially you uh, do a part of the battle right before uh, you know Aragorn and Legolas and the Oathbreakers show up. Um, at the battlefield, uh, you're helping defend a Minas Tirith from, from the invaders from Mordor, and uh, the raid has you basically cut a path through the enemy lines and go after some of the generals. It's a very, very cool raid, um, but it opens up with this, like, gigantic, huge ogre that's, like, 20 feet tall, or, like, or like 35 feet tall, and um, the opening cutscene has it basically, it's, like, so large, it's doing this monologue as it walks back and forth, and it like it's like stomping on and on allied soldiers and it's like kicking huge bodies out of the way and and the actual fight starts by um it grabs a weapon it just literally picks up a whole siege engine and pulls it out of the ground and use that uses that as its weapon and it's so cool the animation's amazing um and they have so many good animations in that game I get excited about cool animations. Uh, the Tabaxis look pretty good as well. So there's like some there's some good animations in DDO as well as the Lord of the Rings Online. Also, Throne of the Dread Terror was the first raid that they made when they decided to go back to making raids. Um, because I quit the Lord of the Rings Online with the re release of the Rohan expansion. And then I started playing again with the release of the Mordor expansion. But right before they released Mordor, they didn't... Had, they hadn't made any raids for years and years and years, so there was, like, no reason to actually get gear or get any items because it didn't really matter. There was, like, not a lot of hard content. They had some hard content. Um, but then they released one six-man called the Silent Streets, which is a very, very, very hard dungeon. And then they released um, the Throne of the Dread Terror, which is also an extremely hard raid, and it's but it's very cool. Even though that was a level 105 raid, so that was the cap at the time, and the current cap is 140, it's still hard at level 140. If you don't do the mechanics, there's like three of the fights you just straight up wipe on. You can't do it unless you do the mechanics. You can't just out DPS it. They're very, it's very well done. Um, and then the rest of the boss fights, you just instantly one-shot everything. You should take the cloak off, but I like the cloak. It looks good. Uh, this is one of the few quests I will be breaking all of the breakables in, uh, simply because there's not that many, and the amount of XP you get is pretty large. The season one cloak. I mean, yeah, I could, I could turn the cloak off. A bard without a cloak. You see one of Osgood's men making his way down the tunnel ahead. I think I can actually break this here. Yeah, I can. Perfect. Uh, so spell conservation. I want to hit both of these things, but I don't want to spend too much mana. So what you do is you want to bring them together and then cast your spells. That way, your character is capable of spending fewer amounts of spell points to deal the same or more damage. We lost Ark Raid is kind of rough. Well, yeah. Lost Ark is a very hard video game. Tactical Zerging? Correct. I've said this before, but I think one of the reasons... There are a lot of people who are against Zerging and they don't like it. But the reality of the situation is that Zerging is a better way to play the game. Because organizing the monsters in such a way that you get to fight them on your terms and in your pack size um, is impactful. It's something I will be showing off in a quest in the desert called um, Purge the Fallen Shrine, 
in which there are so many monsters, this character cannot fight them all without running out of spell points. And I'm going to finish the quest with more than half of my spell points remaining because there are ways to group the monsters in such a way that you are both safe, you're not taking that many hits because the monsters can't all get to you, and also uh, you're able to hit more monsters per spell, deal more damage, and uh, kind of come out on top in terms of the spell point of cost of several of those you engagements. Of from below and to the west. Also, I only have 100 hit points, which feels kind of squish. But look at that charisma. Oh, yeah. And I got 18 constitution, so I'm okay. But yeah, this character is a little squishy. So we'll we'll have to sort of, uh, you know, organize that as I go. Also, my saving throws are not too bad. I will need to do some stuff to get better, though. They pull the left valve? Yeah. I just forget which one you need to pull, so I pull them both. Because you tell me that now, and I'm going to forget again, so I just pull them both every time. Again, so for a couple of slight detours, I now have Ransack bonus with the extra 15% XP to complete the quest. Everything in the room is dead instantaneously, and we're good. Now, you'll notice that I can one-shot most of the monsters with the uh, Shouts L-like ability here. If you're wondering when that's going to stop happening, it's not. Uh, this character only gets better the more levels you get, so there's at no point in the future where my character is going to suddenly just start to get worse or perform worse and uh, not be as strong as it currently is. That's just not going to happen, which is very cool. Um, that's the fun part about spell, spell casters. Generally, they start to ramp up and they do not ramp back down. They don't hit a point where they're like, well, you're too good now. Time to time to become bad again. Mm -mm. That's not how that works. I'm going to grab a level 5 weapon, sell some stuff here, go refill my inventory before I head into the waterworks, and then head into the waterworks. Vitality, air warded bracers are not as good. Nisa's bobble is bad. I want that ring. Uh, I'm going to go buy a bunch of these potions in a second. So let's go. And again, I forgot to use my Bardic Inspiration, which is what I was supposed to do. And a lot of few things resist Sonic. You know, it's Harpies, Slads, and... What else? Harpies and Slads, for sure. Golems uh, don't specifically resist Sonic. They resist um, magic, but... Harpies, Harpies versus Sonic, Slides versus Sonic, and I don't know what else. There is something. Charn Golems? Well, uh, yes, but that's because Golems resist all magic. Up there with Force and Light. Actually, Force is one of the worst damage types in DDO. It used to be one of the better types because it was non-resisted, but Force is not affected by magic resistance rating. If you mouse over magical resistance rating, you'll notice the word Force is missing, and that's because it is like pure magic, and Force damage uh, is, cannot be resisted. However, the end game is heavily like based around the idea that people are reducing monster resistance ratings. And so when you join a raid group, there is a very high chance that monsters magical physical or magical resistance ratings will be down by like anywhere from 50 to 100. So the monsters are taking huge increases in damage. And uh yeah, Kind of sucks when you can't get rid of that. Is it curse removal? It's curse removal. By ten curse removal, ten disease removal. Uh oh, I need. I, I'm gonna hold on the disease removal because I need the the eagle splendor. So I'll buy twenty of these. Here we go. But I'll have the curse removal just in case. Okay, so electric fire, uh, resist acid, resist cold. Yeah, so it's really weird. There was a time when force was good, and force is. One probably the worst damage type in the game. It's either Force Quest or Sonic. Or sorry, not Sonic. Poison. Um, on a character class that can't bypass poison immunity. Good for leveling, bad for end game. Basically, yeah. It's good for leveling because you can't affect magic resistance rating. But there are tons of effects at the end game that do that. Um, and so that's why I posted a Warlock video today where I talked about how, you know, um, if you're hitting for... 40,000 damage with a Dragon Breath or 60,000 damage with the Greater Ruin. And you're like, how do you do that? That's how you do that. Um, if you want to know more about the process of this, I posted a video about Dinosaur Bone Crafting. And Dinosaur Bone Crafting is how many people are getting access to the system when they never had access to it before because it used to be raid exclusive, and now it's not. Which means if you are not a raider, you can get access to all these crazy, powerful effects. The air you. Yeah, I should, I should buy Poison Neutralization. Just have a couple. 
I'm actually just going to lock this and this so I don't have to deal with them, like, showing up on the cell list. This is Solo Bard. I'm going to be showing you how to level through the game as a pure bard. Spell singer. Solo spell uh, storm singer. I chose Stormsinger because it is not the most conventional spellcaster. I wanted to play a Stormsinger anyway, um, and I did Solo Fighter, which was how to get through the game without dealing with any of the traps, and now uh, this will uh, be showing you how to not get through the entire game without dealing through with any of the traps, while also uh, having a third of the hit points. Fighter had like a thousand hit points by level 14, uh, and this character is not going to have a thousand hit points by level 14, and I'm still going to do the Crucible, so... Good old Crucible. Alright. Let me get my buffs up. Put this on. And I want Acid Resistance, and I want Lightning Resistance. Now, important note here is that champions can now spawn, so I do need to be more mindful about my play. Uh, I don't want to be uh, running a, a, a muck of champions. That would be very bad. This is an acid trap here. I put acid resistance potion on, so I only took 37, and I can quickly heal myself back up, so it's not that big of a deal. So that's why I did that. I'm gonna run hug the right on this fire trap, because it does fire on all four cylinders. However, it doesn't um, initially start on the right, so you can kind of just run through it. I'm gonna be coming in here and going after this uh, shaman in this corner, getting rid of it. Then there's gonna be a wolf that's stealth. I can't see it, but I am able to cast um, sound burst and completely whiff and throw it nowhere. The wolf is the really only dangerous thing in this room because the wolf is capable of um, tripping you, and if you trip, you die. Uh, I'm also probably going to be using the shrine in this quest. This character I will be using a lot of shrine or a lot of shrines on, uh, just to make sure I have my spell points up. Again, you're going to notice I'm going to be pulling a lot of monsters together. The reason is because it's more cost-effective to cast one spell instead of many. So now that they're all here, I press one spell and they're all dead. Think about how much mana I saved by just waiting instead of trying to fight each individual kobold. That is something that I think a lot of people need practice on when they run into spell point issues. I am probably not going to run into any spell point issues, even though I'm playing by myself on elite difficulty and I'm not feeding any gear into this character or doing anything special. Um, if you happen to have gear, it can feed it. Um, you know, obviously you'll have a different experience. But as I said, uh, a lot of it's practice, and a lot of it is knowing how to properly use and spend your spell points. Um, which is, you know, again, not me trying to make the claim that you know people don't know what they're doing, but there is a skill in terms of spell point management, um, and it takes time to learn how to do that. Also, stuff like I don't have to fight these spiders. There's no reason to do it, so I'm just not going to. Sorry, your video you had replaced the scimitar with morning star. Was it attuned, or was it better, or when which is better? It's just a stat stick. You can use any weapon in the game. It doesn't matter. Attuned, unattuned. I picked Scimitar for the build, uh, builder, because it's just a cool looking weapon. I think the bone, dinosaur bone Scimitar is very cool looking. Um, also, just lean on your hireling when you need a little bit of extra damage. Not a big deal. So I can just keep sprinting through all this stuff. So as I said, you're going to notice me not killing all of the kobolds. It's because I want to deal with my spell points, but by jumping over top of them and then shouting backwards, I'm able to do more effective uh, use of my spell points. There's another reason why I recommended you put points into the jump skill, because by being able to just angle the kobolds in the right areas and being able to jump over monsters, it's very, very useful. And I'm sure you can see the value here, obviously, as I'm running around jumping over things and then hitting them all with my with my magic. Um, so just keep in mind that is something you can do, and it is something you can practice and learn to do better. Yeah, also shout good, as it turns out. And as I said, this character literally never gets worse and only gets better, which I'm very excited about. Um, there's nothing, nothing bad about this character, and it, it never gets worse, it never slows down. It only, the higher level you get, the more it improves. Again, there's wolves here, so I'm going to throw a sound, son, or sonic, numbers, uh, down to possibly stun some of the monsters, uh, because a unstunned wolf is very dangerous, um, because like Harold of Modius, they attack very quickly, they do a lot of damage. The thing called Sharn here? Uh, I don't think this character's going to struggle in Sharn. Here, there's a shaman. I want to make sure I take care of this. And there's two shamans. Because I have access to jump, I can jump up here and go after the shaman. Go after this shaman. He's dead. Loot the chest. And then leave. There is a trap on the ladder on the back here. 
Um, so I jump up the front to avoid hitting the trap. And I am actually going to shrine just in case there's a bunch of um, kobolds in the final room. Bam. Important note if you're wondering why there isn't a lot of like bot spam in the chat when there used to be a lot more. Uh, the main reason is um, a lot of the bot spam uh, is auto filtered out. I have tons of different like keywords and things that they use. And I guess this is a new one where they actually say the they have no hyperlinks to click on. I wonder if anyone actually falls for that. Good question. Uh, would it be worth it to save a, uh, put a few points in Fade Dark and smash cobalt faces and save spell points from time to time in the early game? Uh, if you own Fade Dark Illusionist, sure. Uh, this video is intended to help people who don't own Fade Dark Illusionist, so I won't be putting any points in it. But if you own it, yeah, absolutely. Then I one shot everything, then a shard, and it's like four shot. Well, yeah. If I'm not doing that, then I won't have greater color spray. And I like greater color spray. A bot spam? Yeah. Like I said, I have um I have a whole bunch of like keywords and stuff blocked out. So they have to be very particular about what they actually bot spam. Yeah. Greater color spray is a fantastic ability. It is from um the Fade Dark Illusionist tree. Uh, I will have, I will not be using that, so I'll have to come up with some other way to easily crowd control monsters on this character. Ah, I'll sort it out. As I said, you're going to notice I was jumping, because I was jumping up and down, I jumped and the kobold's um, lightning bolt went under my feet. As I said, jump very good. Please learn to jump cast. It's important. It's important, man. I just want you to do that. Are you planning on getting Snowball Swarm? Yes, yes I am. This character gets so many fantastic spell-like abilities. As I said, I'm basically just going to be gunning through for the, um, or pretty much exclusively going to be picking up, what do you call it, um, the storm, or the spell singer stuff, uh, because I want to get up to healing, sustaining song. Sustaining song is too good. And then once I have sustaining song, I'll be spending a lot of points, points in other places. Um, so many bards don't just beeline sustaining song. And I think that is a, a bit of a bit of a misplay right there. It's a, it's a bit of a bit of a misplay. You definitely want sustaining song as soon as you can get it. I don't want to get surrounded here, but I also don't want to spend too much mana, so we'll see how this goes. There is a shaman here, which is good. And with the old sun soundburst, stun everybody, and they're dead. Again, soundburst, very good damage spell. It's only good though if you actually have sonic spell powers. If you haven't picked up a sonic spell power item bit harder. Also, it benefits from, like, level. So you want to be able to level up before you are sound bursting everything. Again, I don't feel scared here because I have um, resist electricity on. If I didn't have resist electricity, I would feel scared, but I have it. I want you to make the best build for discovering the DDO lore. Okay. Also, it's a war bro. How are you doing? How's your day going? There's a shaman champ. It was the ice champ, so I was just using the uh, sound burst to, again, lock him down. Also, this is pretty much every monster in the quest dead at this point, uh, so I can be a little bit more um, spendy with some of my spell points. A lore master archetype? No, you need a character that can do everything, right? So you need to be able to disable traps, you need to be a paladin, um, you need to be able to do ranged and melee. I feel like some type of trapping paladin warlock is the answer, so you can do melee and ranged, you can be a paladin. Um, I think that's the answer. Okay, these are just prisoners. Where are you, Arlos? I know he's in here somewhere. So we'll see. Loremaster archetype. Um, so there are a lot of Loremaster adjacent characters, um, or especially prestige classes in 3.5. One of the main reasons for this is that um, lore can mean a lot of different things. Any type of wizard or necromancer is obviously going to be somebody who heavily studies lore. Um, so you have like the black moil lore uh, experts in uh, from Complete Arcane. Uh, you can have the uh, like guild stewards and things that are lore adjacent. With the new archetype, paladin, ranger, warlock. Yeah, probably, possibly. 
Again, you'd want to have more of a focus on the spell casting so you can swap to range whenever you need, whenever need be. Also, you should probably clear this area out before grabbing Arlos, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, we're good. Uh, Arlos does not take damage from these traps, so you can just walk around him. The archaeologist? Oh, I forgot about the action archaeologist. Oh man, that was a good episode. Once more, Arlos dashes off towards the surface and safety. The number of build reviews pending I have? True. Nobody has more build reviews pending than you. That's a fact. You can feel very confident in that. Anyway, the next quest will want a little bit more demand. Has a higher demand on single target damage. Because there are a lot of scary monsters. So do you remember when I said I'm beelining up for this ability here? Psych! I'm actually putting one point in Sonic Blast spell-like ability so I can maximize it. So that way I can have just a little bit of extra damage on a single target on some of the stronger monsters for finishing off the rest of um, the waterworks here. Uh, Stormsinger or Spellsinger? In Heroics, you always go Spellsinger because Spellsong Vigor is really impactful. It's one extra spell point per, se uh, per second. And one spell point per second is very, very good when you have, like, 1,000 spell points. But it's less bad late game when you have, like, or sorry, less bad, less good when you have, like, 3,000 to 4,000 at level 30, at which point Stormsinger is much better. Uh, additionally, if you happen to use Primal Avatar, then you don't need it at all. So you would swap out for sure. So I think this character will be running a Spellsinger build until level 23, at which point you swap over into the full Stormsinger god-killing machine. Because you will have spell point problems if you don't use um, Spellsong Vigor. I've already played a Stormsinger, so I have that experience already. It also means I get uh, Mass Hole Monster for Heroics. My hair is probably hard. I love T5 Storm Singer or Spell Singer all the time for spell points and hold. Yeah, I think it's I think the spell points are a waste of time at epics. Um, and also mass hold monster is cool, but have you heard of Burst of Glacial Wrath that procs uh one D6 plus six damage per caster level? It's pretty good. It, it's, it's pretty good. Just saying. I do like both of those things. All right, so for this quest, uh, there are kobolds that now cast Nyax Cold Ray, so I want to be mindful about that. Also in this room, there are uh, a whole bunch of oozes. I'm going to be pulling them together to kill them all in one big ball. Um, but the uh, kobolds cast Nyax, the oozes do acid, and the kobolds deal lightning, so I want to be able to manage all of that. So I'm going to be basically just running back and forth using my spell-like ability um, and kind of chunking these guys down because they have a lot of hit points. Bugged? I don't know. There's some year back when single weapon fighter barb was top three DPS. They nerfed that though. Did they nerf it? I'm pretty sure they just buffed other classes. When I first came back, it was right after the Swashbuckler update where they uh, revamped Swashbuckler and it was like super strong. The County Monte Cristo build was very, very popular and tons and tons of people were playing Swashbuckler. However, they didn't really nerf anything. They just buffed Barbarian after that and then kept buffing other classes and they just haven't buffed Bard in a long time. Unless there was something that I missed that they actually did heavily nerf, but I, I don't recall. So it was just 1d6 bugged. Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't know that. Hello, Tom Caper of the Arcorniverse. Yo, Ryan up? here. Remember when Sonic Blast was O? Then you went down to the SSG offices and personally nerfed it with your own hands. Yeah, I do remember that. Ah, good times. Ripbozo Sonic Blast Tripbozo. I wonder how many angry co YouTube comments there are going to be from people that are like, this guy has the balls to play Bard after getting Sonic Blast nerfed. It's gonna be awesome. Ripbozo. Also, Ripbozo, thank you for the bits. Ludicrous, appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I Because I have um, acid resistance, I don't care about pulling those levers. I just ran through. Oh, yeah. Second wind is amazing. It's such a it's such a good change. Um, I was very happy that they added that to fighter. Very powerful. Does it cost more? Six? Four? It costs... The spell like ability costs more than the spell? Wow. Friggin' nerf, man. What's this? Alright, so the next room has two 
kobold shamans. I need to be very careful about how I deal with those kobold shamans. One is, or three, one is on the left and two are directly above me. So when I head into the room, we'll be looking up to the left here, targeting kobold shaman and hitting him with my uh, spell-like ability to kill it. The other kobold shamans are up here. So I'm going to ignore them for now and get stuck in some barrels. Uh, kill these. Uh, and then I want to be targeting the shamans up here because I want to be sniping them down as I go. Um, because again, Nyx Cold Raid does hit very hard when it actually hits me. Uh, it is more damaging than Lightning Bolt. Um, however, you only take the damage if you fail your save. You also only take the damage if you get hit and you don't kill them before you see them. You keep talking about it? Yeah, I know that is a problem. I 100% uh, do talk about Path of Exile and then people go, man, that's a good game. I should play that. Million monsters right here. How do you deal with it? You hit them with the uh, sound burst, so it stuns almost everything. And the wolf champ does not get stunned, which is very fun. I'm going to have to deal with that in a second. Also, the boss is not stunned either. Um, so I'm going to hit him with sound burst. Hopefully go for the stun. I got the stun. Wait out on my spell-like abilities, and it is dead. Oh, good times. Good times. Also, resonating scepter. Hell yeah, that's awesome. But it's level 6, and it has 46 stat on it, which is kind of lame. You need all three ranks? Uh, yes. It also reduces the cooldown, which I will be very happy to take later. You actually don't use the Sonic Blast spell-like ability later on. Um, by around level 8, my enhancements will have stabilized, and I'll, you know, kind of have my... I'll stop needing to reset things, but I will be resetting often, um, because I will be eventually getting rid of Sonic Blast uh, to go up here and pick up Sustaining Song. Then after I have that, I'll be resetting again. All right, so now we're going to go down. I don't have Feather Falling, and there are some dangerous monsters, specifically, again, the Spellcasters, the Shamans. I also only have one minute, um, so I'm going to try to snipe it as I go down, like so. So it's dead. Um, so I wanted to hit it with a shout as I went down. That's one of two dangerous monsters. I will be refilling my potions, but I wanted to get rid of the dangerous monsters. The other dangerous monster is right here, this little Shaman. I'm going to snipe it from across the room. It's dead, and now this room is completely safe. Um... So I think I'm probably, before I go to the final boss room, just hit the shrine that's right there. Um, so that way I can have my stats up. I don't really need to spend or save money on, like, potions. Even though I am explicitly doing that. Um, by, like, not drinking more potions instead of just ignoring them and running to the shrine. Yo, what's up, Mist? How are you doing? What's going on? Just maximize even one pip is already cheaper. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Again, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do it. Six mana for a maximized uh, Sonic Blast. I don't need to be casting Sonic Blast constantly for damage. The majority of my damage comes from Shout. It's when I need to kill one thing at one range. I have the ability to just kind of take that monster down. That is the goal. That is explicitly the goal um, of that spell there. As I said, planning for the future and having single target spells is actually something I think that SSG needs to do more of, is add in better single target spells for characters. They have this paradigm where they want single target spells to deal more damage, but then the AoE spells deal less damage. But the problem is there just aren't enough single target spells for most character. Like Bard's only single target spell is Sonic Blast. So the idea doesn't work because then Bards have to do damage. They have to get AoE spells. Um, and so you know, the idea of how they want it to be implemented clashes with how it is implemented. Yeah. Just hit 20. Nice, dude. That's sick. You notice recognizable letters among the scratches. I gotta say, um, especially now, I used to dread epics a lot. And I always hated like how slow it was and how my character felt like it played the same all the time. But man, new epic destinies is so good. Do you have like a path that you take now through um, the epic destinies to get your stats? Or or like, you know, where you start in one de destiny and then swap at some point? Or do you kind of just, you know, mainline one destiny? Presumably Grandmaster. The other side the Single target spell of two targets would be cool. That could be interesting. Oh, I didn't pick up the, the password. I forgot. Illusion focus and accuracy. I mean, if I was using color spray, that'd be good. But also when you need to kill a bunch of boxes, true. Yeah, as I said, I took a break from regular Path of Exile because it was destroying my life, so I have not been playing it as much. I have been playing some Ruthless, but Ruthless is um, much harder to play consistently. <laughs> oh, for Assassin, yeah, Shadow Dancer and LD. Good thing sense. those were eyes and not inverted exclamations. I do appreciate that those are eyes and not inverted exclamations. They look very similar, though. Also, good morning. How are we doing? How are we doing today? 
How are ya? Yeah, Shadow Dancer on Assassin is so crazy good because of the doubling of sneak attack damage. Again, this is why Bard is amazing. See this room? Guess what? Now you don't. Oh god, that feels good. I just press a button and everything dies. Uh, I did not do that on the fighter. And, uh... Ooh, Con Feather Falling level 5 boots. Let's go. I love that. Huge fan. Yeah. Inverted exclamation mark and the letter I are not exactly the same. No, they have similar visuals. Um, and that's the quest. Done. Uh, this room is extremely dangerous and you do not need to do it at all. I am doing it because I'm stupid and I like taking risks. It can be extremely dangerous because if I didn't stun everything in the room, I would have been in a bad spot because those the two casters usually just kill you right away. Fortunately for me, I have access to Soundburst, which just stuns everything immediately and I don't have to worry about it. This character will also be doing all of Tangle Root. I do not get access to the um, resistance spells, so I'm entirely reliant on potions and buffs from places. And so I will be using Tangled Root Gorge uh, to get uh, my resistances. So I'll be doing um, Ghost Beef. Man, you want to play Bard now? Yeah, and I'm level four. Got some groceries, not too shabby. Some rowing. <sighs> get that row machine. That's what I'm talking about. All right, now I'm level three. What's up, Dragon Guard? How are you? How are you doing today? Not level three, level five. I'm doing level three quests now. Um, so that was good. There we go. All of Waterworks is done. In the books. Let's advance the next level of Bard, because it said you level up pretty quick on this character, and it starts to go faster every level you get. Uh, I think at this point is when I want to take uh, Cure Mod. So I'm going to grab Cure Mod here. New level 1 spell. I think I will be grabbing Swim. I don't really need anything else, and Swim is not bad. Because uh, it lets me swim fast. So I got Swim now. Um... And then until I get to 24 points, uh, so that's basically level 7, I'm just going to keep spending points in the Storm, Trigger, Storm Singer tree because the rest of the stuff doesn't help me out too much uh, in terms of what I'm trying to do right now. So let's get that. Cool. I'm level 5. I'm going to put on a couple items. I have this Constitution Natural Armor item I got. I have this uh, Healing Lore False Life item that I got. I have these new Feather Falling Boots. They have Constitution, but I don't really need to worry about that. Uh, I have a Magnetic Club. I don't attack anymore, so the Magnetic Club is pretty good. Um, so it gives me more lightning damage. I don't do a lot of lightning damage, but it is helpful still to have. Um, and I don't have anything else that I can use. I guess I can use this Illusion Focus thing. It gives me Illusion Resistance, which might help at some point. Not doing Solo Fighter. No, this is Solo Bard. I did Solo Fighter, and it was fun. So now we're on Solo Bard. I have 130 hit points, which is still, for this level, kind of squishy, but that's okay. Do a quick sell, and now I gotta decide what quests I want to do next. I'm gonna keep the resonating item because I don't find anything else. The box is cunning. I don't need a wand of repair. Hope it goes on YouTube. I can help with the time codes for the quest. Sweet. Are you the person who posted time codes for the quest in the most recent upload that I did? Because if so, I responded to you that I I said thank you, and then I also stole your time codes that you posted uh, and threw it online. Um. What's some high yield stuff? I'm gonna go do SDK 1 and Sacred Helm. I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna grab a level 5 hireling, just because the higher level hireling, the better they do. So we'll get Molin Kaskin Flagon. Have a better hireling, and let's go. I don't have a lot of things I need to change out. I don't have any other gear. I could check out the auction house, but I'm pretty uh like low on cash. So I'll probably do that later. But yes, the full uh, solo bard playthrough will be going on on YouTube. Um I'm working. I'm almost done uploading the solo fighter. Uh, so once that's done, then we'll put up the solo bard. And it's nice because it's something I can throw up in between my regular uploads. So in between build guides and quest guides and helpful informative things. You finished fighter? Oh, uh, fighter's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, fin I finished like uh, three weeks ago. <laughs> um, I just uh, hadn't uploaded it because I talked about this. Um, in other live streams, but the long and short of it is that basically I've been like going through like a depressive episode for the past two months, and I wanted to make some more positive changes in my life so I wouldn't run into those problems. And so one of the major changes I made is I've started to change up like my diet, um, which has helped me tremendously with my energy during the day, uh, which is why I have uploaded a video pretty much every single day um, for the past several weeks because I've just been you know, more in, uh, filled with energy and able to do more things during the day, which has been helpful. 
more chicken parm. No, chicken parm's delicious. Just uh, eating some vegetables, and it's mostly actually just overeating is my issue. Uh, overeating is the problem that I have, and so I wanted to uh, rein that in. All right, I have uh, fire resistance because the monsters that are on this hill that you can't actually see right now have um, fire spells, so they cast Scorching Ray, and so I wanted to avoid that. Scorching Ray is coming, step, side step, still take one, and melee. Are you filled with rogue energy? Uh, not currently, but I will be later, yes. You either be thinking about doing a solo trapper. Uh, my plan is when the new ranger archetype comes out to do the solo uh, trapping character to show you how to disable traps in most quests. I'm not going to do every quest, but I'll do like most quests. Because I like ranger and the new archetype looks really cool. There is a hobgoblin on my left. I already knew that. I just wanted to take care of this one first. The slayer is more dangerous than the guards. Not that much more that dangerous, though. If I get tripped by the guards, that's my most terrifying... That's the thing I find the most terrifying, so I want to manage that better. The one cash was this. No haggle. Yeah, it's tough. Need more time for yourself, which is a good thing. It's less so taking more time for myself and literally just stopping overeating. Like I said, it's really destructive. Um, I would... I had this problem where I would just... Uh... And some of you might might notice I'm not like I'm not a huge guy, right? I'm not. Uh, it, it wasn't an issue like body image, or weight or anything like that. Because um, it's not like I ate so much and I was eating myself to death. It was just I would eat a lot in one sitting. I would overeat in a sitting, and then I would just be really tired all the time because my body has to process all of this food that I just shoved into it. Um, and I wanted to. I just wanted to get away from that. So I did. So now I am um, away from that. I am feeling better. Um, you want to follow the, um, the multi-step program, so you too can also um, quit your your habits. Here is the multi-step program from Shrimp Tom. Uh, step number one is don't go back for seconds. If you eat an amount of food, that's probably the amount of food that you're supposed to eat. So if I sit down to make breakfast and I have a, and I get a bagel with cream cheese, delicious. What I shouldn't do is go, wow, that was really tasty. I'm gonna eat another bagel with cream cheese because that was really tasty. I don't need to. One is enough. It's very filling. It's satisfying. I went back for two because I want it. Because I need it. So that's step one. Uh, step two is replace some of the food that I eat with vegetables. Also, this trap, there's a blade trap in here. It's extremely dangerous and it will kill you. To avoid the blade trap, hug the right wall and then jump into this corner. It triggers the trap so it doesn't hurt you. Uh, so that's a pro tip there. Just want to make sure I put that pro tip in the video. Um, so yeah, uh, next pro tip of, from the, uh, Shrimp Tom food program, uh, I am a fragile, uh, human being, and I am still going to fill my, my diet with garbage. I'm still going to go to McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever and eat all sorts of bad food. So, one combo. That's the rule. I'm still going to eat fast food. I'm not, I'm not a maniac. I'm not going to just, like, I still want to live, uh, but yeah, one combo. None of this, like, yeah, I'll get the Big Mac and maybe throw in the Quarter Pounder and I'll get the McFlurry and I'll get that. No, 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 no. One combo. That's the limit. If they sell one discrete portion of food, that is how much you eat. Um, this is, it already is, like, not great for you. So just, like, just chill. Just chill with the one, you know? Um, And then, finally, uh, if you get anything prepackaged or frozen, so say you buy, like, a frozen pizza or something like that, the amount that you eat is what is on the package. Just read the back of the box, it tells you how much you're supposed to eat, and just eat that much. And by doing all of that, I feel way better. I'm still eating well over 2,000 calories a day, because I'm not, like, being pickier and choosier with my food. Um, oh, did I already say hey, replace some of what I eat Brian with vegetables? Here. That too. After playing DDO this today. morning, I have decided not to renew my perception glasses. I've mm. seen enough. In fact, I am giving up drinking for a month. Sorry that came out wrong. I am giving up drinking for a month. Oh, hilarious. Also, yeah. I had one of my good friends tell me I make people uncomfortable by violating their personal space. I feel it was a hurtful thing to say and it completely ruined our bath. Yeah, honestly, that would be very hurtful, especially when you're sharing a bath with someone else. Um... And they're like, you're in my personal space, I don't like this. I mean, like, how are you both supposed to enjoy the bath at that point? 
yeah, definitely would be a big problem and uh, kind of a bummer. Bummer thing to say, you know what I mean? Uh, would you like to omega size that? Maybe. But yeah, so that's basically, thank you for the dollar. Uh, that's basically it. That's the, the general idea between uh, what I want to do. Uh, this is not me as a great call to action. Like, you should change your life because I did something very minor. I made minor changes and it makes me feel a little bit better. So you should do it too. <laughs> uh, no, um, I don't think I'm better than anybody else. I'm just like, I'm just making a change I think is better for me. And I am happy with my changes and my progress that I've made. I feel good. Uh, I don't like this Herald of Asmodeus. Uh, I don't, it, the fact that it hit me for 35 really sucks. I don't like Hold Person. That also is bad. Six, five, one. Oh, yeah, dude. That was one. Two, one. Bro! Dude, stop rolling ones, please. Oh, my gosh. All right. Yeah, video games, dude. Holy moly. Thank you, hireling. This is why you bring a hireling with you, right? So if you're like, oh man, you know what? Uh... Okay, I failed my whole person with a what? With a one! Dude, stop rolling ones! Three, one! I don't even know what to do. Okay. One, one, I... It's not even like my will save suck. I'm, first of all, I'm plus 10, which is not amazing, but should it, I make, I'm pretty sure on a, a six, I make the save. I think it's only like 16, but oh my God, I rolled five ones. More than half of my saves were ones. Unbelievable. That's not true. Very believable. Holy guacamole. Again, this is why you use hirelings in Hardcore League, please. This oh my God. Uh, and Grand Duel has a uh, hold, so yes, I'm going to be backing up. And not fighting in one room. I'm now terrified of the ones. The ones! There we go, everything is fine. Oh my goodness. Anyway, sorry, I was yelling and I did not read what you wrote, Dragon Card Music. Who's the of the game because I watched a video stream and somehow got rekindled? Left nine months ago at level 24, now I'm level 27 on your way to your first TR. That's awesome, I'm glad to hear that. Your friend used to play together, but it's hard to get him in-game now, so we've got all these lonely adventures. Why not indulge? There you go. And also, uh, thanks to the video that I put out, if you ever get stuck on a quest and you're like, hmm, I don't know how to do this solo, you can just check out the video guide. Um, Prudent Helm of Spot. These are bad items. Resonating Scepter for level 6. That's even lower than my level 6 Scepter I already have. Combustion Necklace. It's also bad. I have two cloaks, a Balance of Cold Absorption and a Spell Sight. I will take Balance of Cold Absorption because wolves do be knocking you down, though. Well, I give, you give bards luck of the deadly kind, even when you play one? True. Holy mackerel. And you're right, I should change up my die. Uh, pro tip, when you're rolling poorly, just like in real life, where you put that die on the edge of the table, change the color. Opal, we're going to be moving to golden magic. Hopefully that will help me out here and uh, protect my character and keep me alive. We'll see. Is it okay to go out later at night to buy... Just cake? Sure. This is America, dude. You can do whatever you want. You live in a society where you um, work a job to have capital to then spend that capital on products. And if you want to buy cake, buy cake. Do it. Especially if it's the McCain variety. I do recommend buying a McCain cake at a gas station at 2 in the morning and then going home and eating the whole thing with a fork. Man, do I love Bard. You guys remember that this took marginally longer on my fighter? Oh, it's not taking marginally longer anymore, I'll tell you what. Like, my character was pretty slowly working through the early levels and like trying to figure out where to go and what to do and you know, or like this character, it was a little bit slower with Sonic Blast, yeah. Damn it. I always forget which one you have to swim through. I usually pull all three. Thought McCain did fries. Uh, McCain does both fries and the McCain cake. That's the emote, the McCain cake. Right there. It's a stack. A stack of three of them. Or four of them? Four of them. Mmm, deep delicious. 
Middle valve, right pipe. Check. Check, check, check. You'd think I would know pipes based on my, you know, my heritage. Um, but, uh, yeah, apparently not. Then they do fries in the UK. Yeah, I forgot that McCain is a UK company. Um, McCain are the people that sold the, the smile fries, the potato smiles. What a product. They're little potatoes in the shape of a smile. You fry them. Do they have those in the UK? I assume that there's a possibility they won't, because I don't know how many people smile on the regular in the UK. With the whole, like, stormy, rainy, dark, cold weather every single day. Alright, spin all this. There we go. Having feather falling is very nice for this. Again, I still can't do any of the areas, like the... There's like the side area on the right here that requires like lock picking to get through. I actually know how to get through the area once it's open without dealing with the traps. I just can't get the door open. Um, so I'll have to show that uh, at some point in the future. Take that, skeletons. Eat sonic damage. I've never been to the UK. I'm sure a lot of the people are wonderful. Those are just mostly commentary about the weather. As a Canadian who uh, rarely sees the sun during the winter time, I uh, am familiar with the whole with the idea of the weather not being good most of the time. Everything in UK is not bad. Oh, how you doing? Uh, not bad. Good. Um, not bad. It's, uh, yeah, it's not go too far. It's not go crazy. I'm not bad. If the fries aren't smiling, he. Uh, you can have your dinosaur chicken nuggets chased from them around the plate. True. Oh, man. Dino nuggies. When I buy chicken nuggets, I don't buy the ones in animal shapes. But as a grown-up, I really should. Something I've learned is that when you are an adult, you can do whatever you want. And you very quickly learn that just because you can do whatever you want doesn't mean you should. You know? It's like when you're 20 and you go, you know what? I don't live at home. I can do whatever I want. And then you eat some ice cream for breakfast and you realize, oh, yeah, that's not a good idea. It slows me down during the day. I don't really like the way I feel later. You get, like, you get bloated. Not generally the best idea. Um, so, yeah, it's not something you want to do all the time. But when you get to buy, like, your own breakfast cereal or, like, yeah, I will buy the nuggets in the shape of little dinosaurs. You know why? Because it's it's just molded anyway. There's the shape of the mold. It doesn't change the chicken nuggets you whether you buy them in a square or in the shape of a dinosaur. The dinosaurs are the bomb. Is getting tower shield proficiency ever worth it in a DDO? Yes, it's extremely worth it if you play any type of tank. You want tower shield proficiency. Um, because the negatives for tower shield proficiency is hit chance. Uh, also, if you play a vanguard who uses tower shields, you want tower shield proficiency as well. Now, traditionally, tower shields have been the highest damage shield in DDO. Um, if you're playing as a vanguard or somebody who hits with their shield, even just a few points or having some offhand shield bash chance, uh, tower shields have traditionally been the highest damage one. However, with the release of Feywild, the Pharaoh Crystal Shield was added to the mix, which is the highest damage shield. Um, so, yeah. Okay, how do you get through this? You just step forward a little bit, inch by inch, wait for the traps to come out, and then sneak through. Same thing, inch by inch, traps come out, and then just walk in between them. Not too bad. Just gonna swing all the way down here. We're good. Okay, if you're if you're anybody who wants to hit in melee and you're using a shield, you want proficiency. Everybody else, it doesn't matter. You don't need proficiency on a um a spellcaster or a cleric. So like a cleric or a favorite soul or whatever. Um, although if you're an arcane character, you will need to deal with the arcane spell failure penalty. Also, I need to rebuff here. I don't need that many buffs, but I do want blur. Spiders, as an important note, um, ignore concealment. So all of the spiders that are in here, um, they will hit me regardless. So even though I might have concealment active, um, they can still hit me because they have tremor sense. They basically touch the ground and can feel the vibrations and know where my character is. Even though I'm blurry, they can still find me. You get full PR and stuff without proficiency? Yes, you do. It is uh, kind of confusing. I guess that means on a tank, you don't really need proficiency. Um, yeah. This monster is mildly dangerous, so I'm going to whittle him down at range. You hear the sound of heavy footsteps rushing toward you. And there's nothing he can do about it. But just, did, uh, just did in the flesh quest for the first time, never doing that ever again on hardcore. Oh, dude. In the flesh is great. The final fight, 
the important thing about that is that the beholders uh, spawn while the screen is black. So what you want to do is you like load into the quest and then once the screen goes black, you want to mash tab and spin your camera until you see the beholders and then throw any instant kill stuns, whatever, go find them and kill them right away because they will kill you before it's done loading. Do I want to do the next one? Uh, how dangerous is the next one? It's not dangerous. So I will do this one too. Yes, and huge skill penalties. That is correct. Yeah, you take a minus to a major amount of your skills. Um, so you gotta be careful about that as well. I need a fire resist, and I think that's it. Um, I would be more powerful if I recalled out, but whatever. Plan on making a dino bone set for my caster druid. Is there a dino, uh, dino bone tower shield? There is a dino bone tower shield. It only comes from the raid. So the dino bone shields only come from the raid. That's what anti-beholder crystals are for, for Hardcore League, yes. Um, also, I want to get the optional done. Um, so I'm going to go over here and kill this thing. Just to get the Witch Doctor optional, you do have to come here and kill this Witch Doctor. Yeah. Hit me. Spawn respawning beholders in the end fight sucks. And they do respawn, yeah. But the thing is, you can track when they respawn, because if you see any monster up here, that means there is also a beholder. Any tips on farming the event, or just play the game? Yeah, just play the game. If you play the game, you'll get the keys. Um, so like, what is it? This character, I don't have any keys yet, but I also just started doing quests with champions. Um, I got about 20 keys yesterday in four hours. Drop the stun underneath me. You're gonna notice I ground target a lot. So this is a important lesson for many of you if you don't ground target when you cast spells or play the game. Ground targeting. Ground targeting is you target the space on the ground as opposed to a monster. I will sometimes target by using tab to grab a specific target. But in this case, I ran over here and I knew hobgoblins are here and hobgoblins are here. I know they're invisible. I can't see them, but I know they're there. So what I did is I ran here, I jumped, and then I threw my ability down. The hobgoblins were right behind me and all of them got stunned in the ability. Ground casting or ground targeting is something I do all of the time. And I would recommend you learn. Uh, it is very useful for when you want to hit two monsters. Let's say hypothetically, there is a monster here, this is a monster, and this is a monster. If I have fireball, I either have to cast a fireball and another fireball to kill it. So one fireball on this monster and one fireball on this monster, or I put fireball right here by targeting, and now I hit this and this at the same time. If you want to play a spellcaster, you should get practice with ground targeting. How do you do it? Mouse look mode, which for me, the control is right click. Um, if you are using the default control scheme, so under key mapping the default, um, that is left click to is to aim your camera. Um, I use right click because I use the classic, which is the uh, control scheme the game released with. Because I'm a boomer and I have been playing this game uh, since its beta in 2005. And I don't want to change. Shamans have the super powerful thing. No, they they have Dragon Breath, but it's a lot weaker than in Epics. They do have it, but it's way weaker. But you should still have Fire Shield Cold. If you can manage it. It's good. You want it. There seem to be like uh, Hobgoblin Marksman, I don't have to fight. Why? Because they're not going to do anything. They're just going to stand here and shoot arrows into the wall. So I can ignore them. Generally ranged monsters, you can just kind of ignore. Use classic, but with mouse look always on. Yeah. Uh, I believe the default mouse look button is T to just enable always on mouse look, which I reset to F11 for um, some, sometimes when I'm doing like um, some stuff for videos, I'll turn it on. I need more hands. I'm being very mana spendy right now, and the main reason is because I am going to be using the shrine that's just upstairs. Sometimes you have to know where your shrines are, and shrine knowledge is also an important thing to playing a spellcaster. If you don't have good shrine knowledge, uh, you're not going to try or use the shrines efficiently, and that is a problem. So again, there's monsters here. I can't see them. Ground targeting means I don't have to. They're all dead. That's why I use ground targeting. Beaches on Elite? Yeah, don't do uh, Storm the Beaches on Elite. That's another epic uh, epic quest. Epic Storm the Beaches on Elite is a death trap. Heroic, the ballistas don't work. On Epic, the ballistas will kill you. Not like they can kill you, you will die. You're going to die to the ballistas. And on Hardcore League, that is uh, game over. 
don't do epic storm the beaches on hardcore on heroic or sorry on the regular servers dying is not a big deal you just go oh okay and you figure it out on again on hardcore there's a 100 percent chance you're going to die so don't do it i'm being chased somebody's being chased i believe it is my hireling who's being chased anyway i'm just gonna use the shrine here um so that way i can be more flexible with my spell points there's a pack of monsters just up here in front of the shrine door so you make it super stealth I just do one of those one of these the marksman's not even gonna move from his spot and gets killed by my hireling and we're all set how does molin have 100 percent mana has this guy not spent a single cast a single spell damn Uh, are you currently on Hardcore Iconic? So yes, I am on Hardcore League, which means that this solo uh, bard playthrough, guided playthrough, I have to be very careful and take all the precautions. The reason why I'm doing it on Hardcore is one, it's the extra challenge and I'm an adrenaline junkie. <sighs> and also um, the requirement for caution means I have to take a few extra precautions with potions and preparing for things. Uh, which also lends itself to the fact that I can then explain what I'm doing and help people that don't know what they're doing uh, to get a bit of an, uh, an, an edge there and a bit of an understanding. Whereas if I'm on the regular server, dude, if I'm playing on the regular server, I'm not buying resistance potions. I'll just take the, you know, the fact that I might die on some quests and just take the L and then just play the game normally. But I would recommend if you don't know what you're doing, but that's because I'm, I'm feel like I'm very conf or I'm very confident in my skills. And I feel like there's a very low chance I would, you know, get killed by pretty much anything, uh, for the most part. But here I have to take the precaution, and I think it's better to take the precaution than not. Nolan has a wand. He did a 100 damage with a Searing Light wand? Yo, I gotta buy me some of those wands. Hey, Lord El Eltom? I, I, Eltom is somebody else. I am Eltrim. You are speaking to the wrong lord. Oop, gotcha. Oh no! Also, when you see their fire, their hands light up with fire, that means they're casting um, fl uh, flame strike. So you know to just keep moving. If you are moving forward with twenty percent movement speed, you can't be hit by flame strike. Twenty percent higher. Yes, yeah, so this, like I said, this is on hardcore. There's stealth monsters here. I just don't know where they are. There it is. Um, this is on hardcore. I'm doing it for the, the tension. I think it's exciting. It adds to the, the gameplay. And it's just more fun for me as a regular consumer. I just enjoy playing on hardcore, man. The idea that I could die at any moment is kind of fun. Like, that whole thing where I got five ones in a row would have been kind of dramatic. But the drama is dialed up to 11 because I'm on hardcore. And everybody in chat knows that rolling five ones in a row on hardcore against old monster is kind of bad. Ugh. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you get stunned? Important note, I'm pretty much only worried about the spellcasters when it comes to keeping the monsters down or stunning them. Uh, the rest of the stuff I don't care too much. I'll just like blow them all up. I think that is a wand. I think you're right. I think he is literally whipping out a wand of uh, searing light. No, he's definitely casting the spell. That's 100. It just doesn't cost mana, I guess. He has a zero mana cost Searing Light. Ow. Oh, well. Oh. I'm going to pop up my health to full before I do this room, and now I'm going to run in and kill everything. Trick is Soundburst to make sure I stun as many monsters as possible. Try to hit as many... Uh, spellcasters as possible. It's the spellcasters the most dangerous part. Second most dangerous part of the wolves. Again, Sunburst again, dropping it in so I can stun on the wolves, and everything is dead. Ooh, and I got the named item, the Robe of Resistance. It's not good, but I have it now, which is very cool. Technically, it's resistance 2 at 1. If it had any other stats, we need. It has an augment slot, which is kind of 